Now let's begin the story. I ain't your average cat. I slap box with lions. Ever since the fifth grade, kick ball with tires. Made a mini fortune off a rip dog for appliance. Money when it's stove back, hit dog with irons. Boogie need to find God. Shit dog, I'm trying. That's why I robbed the deacon house. Man, quit your lying. I did it. Brand new! H-Town's finest. The 16 Shots podcast with young James Boogie and A.R. Dub. I know you're going to dig this. Man, you recording? I'm going to record too. I'm going to just say to Mr. Williams, look like he's way too mature for us and our shenanigans. <laughs> That's why I put on them intellectual glasses. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make three glasses. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, now you went, you went from intellectual to Malcolm. Now you're militant, <laughs> brother. Hmm. <laughs> Malcolm Gladys. Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, boom, and then boom, and see how techy I am, man. You know what I'm saying? This is where the college education gets you right here. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay, so, uh, man, uh, before we start, and this is part of the conversation too, but man, the older I get, the more I really feel Martin, like, I was always, mm-hmm. I was, I was always, uh, um, I was thought the Fresh Prince was a better show than Martin because the, it was, it was, it was better written. It wasn't as slapstick. It wasn't as unrefined, and it, it didn't poke fun at us so much. You know what I'm saying? As a people, it kind of, I feel like Martin kind of poked fun at us. Yeah, especially when he was dressed up like Shanae and doing all those specific characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kind know. of stereotype and some some narratives did get stereotyped in there. Yeah. But and which uh, which show you say was better? I thought I thought the Fresh Prince is better than Martin. Uh although I did think Martin was a high level show. But as I get older, some of the the the, the scenarios that he was in I kind of like, oh man, Martin was really on some, he was on to something. I guess it was the demographic he was shooting for was so broad and it was so layered the way he did it. I remember when he uh when he had got lost his job. So he decided to do the um the talk show. I remember the talk show. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about yeah. like this. Yeah, he brought and he, in his apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he had he had a little the, like uh, and he he invited his friends over or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And he back door it was like, tell me. And he turned into an expose, you know, he was at the end of his rope, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, I'm going all out, you know what I'm saying? And y'all love me enough to go, I'm, y'all be mad, I know, but y'all know what it is, y'all know me, y'all know what's going to happen afterwards, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I understand, after I would do that, but I understand the level of desperation that he was at. And it's comical, yeah. but it's the reality for a lot of black yeah, men, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, period, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but, it was uh, he did it bootleg, but he did what he had to do. That's what we know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas Will Smith, you know, he would tackle, he would tackle, he was sticking, speaking directly to black men from one perspective. Like he was like, this is the experience of a young black man. These are the traumas that we have. These are the, you know, it was very well written and, and kind of direct. It wasn't really no layers, to, it was great. But it wasn't no layers. Like a little kid would miss out on some of the, you know what I'm saying? Well, a little kid could laugh at Martin. A 20 year old person could laugh at Martin, a 30 or 40 or 50, you know what I'm saying? You know, he even had the old ladies there and brought some of the old school fools back to be fools again and show them, like, yeah, we've been able to climb like this for years, you know what I'm saying? This ain't nothing new. I ain't the first one. But anyway, thanks again. Oh, duh, man. What's the name of the podcast, man? Oh, man, I'm so glad that you asked that question. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Y'all can hear it, but our audience will hear it. Now let's begin the story. I ain't just uh, an average cat. I slept uh, with my lions. Ever since the fifth grade, yeah. kicked balls with tires. Made a mini fortune off a rip song for clients. Money wanted to throw back, hit dog with iron. Well, I like post-production. Gosh, shit, dog, I'm trying. That's why I robbed the Deacon House. Man, fish your life. I did it. You got and to change they, this, man. Remember, it's, 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 it's really fun. Yes, yes, yes. It is us. It is us. It is the 16 Shots Podcast with Young James Boogie. Hey, y'all, Doug. Special guest. Go ahead and introduce our special guest, Young James Boogie. 
I'm gonna introduce myself, man, because I, I can't say enough great things about people, man. And, and I will tell fibs. I'll make up stuff like, yeah, you know, this is a real person that invented Google. You know what I'm saying? He got his idea stolen. You know what I'm saying? But now I, I like people to just sell out because I, I embellish too much. You do lie on oh, me a lot. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that is this my cue? Yeah, that's yeah, your cue. cue. Joke out, okay. my brother. Yeah. All right, what's up? My name is Brian Williams. I'm a first of all, I'm a father, creator, author, artist. Um, born in Brooklyn, raised in Houston, and I'm just trying to, you know, give my little light to the community and and do what I can to actually give and unite. And yeah, and, and that's basically it. And just you know, showcase what I have. So um, I'm gonna tell you now, before Young James Boogie starts the serious shit, we're not finna have this pro New York, Brooklyn uh, hip hop conversation if we get on rap. You know what I'm talking about? I know y'all think that New York is we, the hey, hip hop. in the Bronx, y'all got it from the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, 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 no. This Texas rap down here. You know what I'm talking about? I know you heard the pimp when you said that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, man. Hey, you know, I don't been in Houston too long, so yeah, it's 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 a southern rap thing, but. We birthed it. Y'all are our kids. You know, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. I don't know, man. Uh, uh, I mean, in the same way that, you know, uh, the same way that they say, oh, well, the Greeks had fire first or whatever. So that, but we don't be like, yeah, man, the Greeks was the ones, man. You know, it's always a beginning. You know what I'm saying? And you must respect to the beginning, but, you know what I'm saying? I know little twelve year old kids that cannot rap KRS one right now. Hold on, no, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 I ain't gonna let you be disrespectful, bro. KRS one is knowledge reigns supreme. Nah, it ain't no twelve year olds rapping like that. Yeah, don't say KRS. No, listen. What you guys saying is that KRS one would have better lyrics. I agree. He would have better lyrical content, but as well as far as stylistically. And range and ability to rap, like to put triple and triple entendre together, to to um to 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 harmonize, to do what these young people do, like the evolution of rap right now, bro. Like it's it's like it's like saying it's like saying if a if a if a skilled point guard right now in the NBA went back fifty years, right? He'll be man, he'll be all. Behind the back, between the legs, spin move. What you nah, might have see, one or two guys see, doing that. You got you got to give credit and credence to the originators. If you go back to when Doctor Nate Smith decided to put some peach baskets up and hoop, yeah, and we had the single dribble. That was yeah. revolutionary at the time. So yeah, the game evolved just like hip hop evolved. So yeah, yeah. You, had, you had your MCs who started out one way, and of course it is, it has evolved like all genres of music have evolved. But you yeah. can't say. The KRS One has rhymes as a twelve, like a twelve year old, bro. Like no, no I didn't. I didn't say that. I it's said respect. A twelve. I said a twelve year old. A twelve year old right now would be able to out rap KRS One because KRS One finna say something. He finna be deep. It's gonna be insightful. Yeah. It's gonna be witty. But it's gonna rap it like this and go like that and come hey, from the front and to the back. <laughs> and it's young. And there's it's, a nine. And it's there's young, a nine. Sir, there's a nine-year-old trap rapper right now, and he's trash, bro. So yeah, yeah. But it's also the Lele, you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, but then you have that twelve, that twelve year old from the coming. Hey, bop, 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 bop. Hey, bop, 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 bop. I do, I do, I do. They're gonna have four or five because they are the sons of the originators. I got all my daddy's tricks plus all the tricks that he never got to. Let me ask you a question. Not, yeah. Do you think KRS One? Can hop on a track right now and be yeah. able to spit with a with a with a modern young rapper of today. I think that he would. It, no, I don't it, think he, he, would. <laughs> he said no, no. I think that I that think young that, rapper couldn't keep up with the intellectual verbiage. Thank you. Okay, okay. I, I see where you're going. No, I appreciate it. No, I thought you was on the limb with Boogie. I no, I think no, I not. think <laughs> I think that there are rappers that are of a lower tier right now, that like they're not called J. Cole, Wale, uh, Drake, Wayne. They're rappers that they're not of that. Like 2 Chains will wash KRS-One right now. 2 Chains, stylistically, not verbiage wise, but stylistically, if I, gave, if I got yeah. a, a million people from around the country 
and we like and gave him and said, pick between Karis one and two chains today of a, of a range of a whole range. Two chains gonna have more people, man, because he he has more he, he's more what's called he has more creativity in his delivery and he has more skill set because he's the son. To say all that to say the South has everything like Scarface had everything that any New York rapper ever had plus he had the Southern swag that's why they be like he top five even in New York like yeah he got he got we got and he got some we all got so yeah, no they were talking about Scarface in New York You're right yeah yeah because and that's why I'm saying the younger generation has everything like yeah. they they have rhetoric that is like everyday not like there's some words like you know everyday knowledge to them that they that carries one created like you know like they've moved on past whack and and dope they got a whole new yeah. ways of saying that that carries mm -hmm. one ain't gonna even think to put in a song because he don't even talk like that so now yeah. they verbiage is more complex i got i got i can put dope in i can put dope whack live i can go do, down the lineage of wordage to say about something yeah. and all he can say is they're coming from the front they're looking at your brain all insane in the <laughs> brain like they ain't got it i don't man. think they in 2023 if krs1 hopped on a track that's what that's the verbiage he's going to use by the way i don't think he have is. you heard uh, have you heard any krs1 and i'm being facetious right now but have you ever heard a krs1 song he is not a delivery king. He never was. It was the knowledge part. Yeah, because he, he follows Krishna consciousness and he's more of an intellectual rapper, but yeah, he still he has is. that New York style. That New York style is never going to change with KRS One. He's got yeah. that New York style. He can switch, he can throw some different stuff in the music, but he's always going to have that specific New York style. But with yeah. that, to me, it's like, you know, he's not. He's not going to sit here and change up his tone because he's not trying to appease to this crowd. Or he's not trying to do this for this people. He's being himself. Yeah, so he's gonna yeah. do what he does. He's gonna have that New York style. I'm hearing other rappers now that that was rapping in the '90s, but now they sounding like these new kids because they switching up the, the style so they can yeah. cater to the masses, even though mm -hmm. they know it's not truly themselves. So you got to look at the genuine and the authenticity of it. And, okay, okay. You, do you think that who you, who do you, do you? This is opinion based. <laughs> who do you think raps better, Cameron or Karis One? Oh damn! Oh boy, <laughs> no. So they both have their own style. Yeah, of, you know, like verbiage and made up words. You know, some some people don't fuck with Cam because his style. You know, he hits you with the made up yeah. uh, Harlem words that them them fly ass niggas use. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you asking me, I'm gonna tell you Cam, but that's because Cam was in my generation though. Now, if you asking someone of my brother's age or slightly older, they're gonna tell you KRS one. So I think yeah, you're right because we going with a generation. So if you was a, I'm an early '80s baby, so I grew up, yeah. you know, Dipset and all that. That was in my prime. That was in my 20s and stuff. So, but KRS, he was a little bit ahead of his time because you, you you can go all the way back to like the X Clan, Grand Nubian, De La Soul, Tribe Called yeah. Quest. They all had a more different style. It, it, Rakim. Uh, um, um, all the, you know, a lot of these East Coast raps, what's that one that, uh, Big L, guru. you know, so a lot oh. of them had a, yeah, Big L, Guru, Black, a lot of them has different style, and I think it it changes with the generation, so I think, like, every 10 years, you're gonna have a, you see, you're gonna have, like, a shift in the sound every 10 to 15 years in, in the culture, but to me, the shift, we talk about, you know, the changes over the years, but, I mean, the shift has come to me, like, I just don't see, like in the mainstream rap, I just don't see the value that used to be there when we talking about, if we going back to like Tribe Called Quest and De La Soul, we going back to the early 90s when uh, Queen Latifah, what was Queen Latifah's group called? Um, you know what I'm talking Queen Latifah's yeah, rap group. Yeah, he don't like uh, Queen Latifah. And then he went solo. Fla I, I don't, Flavor, Flavor Unit. Yeah, he don't like Queen okay, Latifah, yeah. he says she can't rap. She really can't oh, rap either, man, but you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, will, she, I will say this though. If you throw a guy in, in, in the hat like like Cool G rap, then I think that's a different conversation because I think Cool G was ahead of his time with, with how he was spitting. Like, yeah, I think Cool G rap can get on a, on, on, a, on a track right now with, you know, name it Griselda, uh, 
some of your hottest little baby shit. You can even throw him on track with the J. Coles of the world. And he might have some rhymes that might sing, sound a little dated, but I think he's still going to go with, with, with the younger rappers of the day. But I do think Cool G was ahead of his time, though. I think, yeah, there's been a number of rappers that have been ahead of their time. And that's why we probably just don't hear about them. And then you got a number of rappers that'll be on some knowledge stuff. But then you got to understand, you know, you got these rappers that, depending on what you say, is how you're going to get heard. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's certain people that control everything. You know, we got rappers out here. We wonder why we got these garbage, trash ass rappers on the mainstream. But it's like, we didn't elect these rappers. They just got put here. For, and now we choose yeah. them out of the. What we have on the track. Well, I think also, um, and this ties in. Uh, we can skip around a little bit. This ties into the death of news, the death of news media. So that you know, uh, uh, Buzzfeed just just closed down, uh, closed the site down, and, what? and uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't even know that. Yeah, and so the CEO was talking about it, and he was, and he was saying really like, and he made he made a point to say he's like, when they had that video. Somebody sent him a, uh, the, the picture of the dress that was as blue as the gold as it whatever, right? And they posted that. And he said, from that moment on, like all the companies realized that the news ain't really important. You know what I'm saying? It's just the views. So the 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 the, the news ain't important. This is so if I, I don't care. In fact, I really wanted to be polarizing news. So I'd rather get an untrained, you know, I can I witness account of something as opposed to having a trained person who can give it to the masses like, oh, this is what's going on. I'd rather have somebody who have one side because it's going to get a lot of views. And then they transfer mm -hmm. from the views to the comments. It's like they noticed that the, the views uh, were one, but really it was the comments and the ones that had the most, you know, po uh, polarizing uh, viewpoints got the most comments. Didn't have to have the most views, but the comments, because the comments say, okay, I'm engaged. So all that's being said, Said at, at one point, Facebook, uh, all the major um, outlets were paying for news stories. But once that once that happened, and they and they, and they, they seen the algorithm can be moved without any substance, they went they stopped paying news. So a lot of uh, it was a several different. Uh, this is one of the bigger ones. But several different news outlets closed. And referring back to rap music, I know I'm going a long way with this, but I think that. The newer generation learned that they and got like like if you ever pull some of these artists to the side or hear them in other in other lights like little Uzi, like they can really spit, but they realize like now nah, you know what man, I'm trying to get paid, and and yeah. and this is what get this is what gets paid, and I have I my I find the talent, I'm I'm speaking in from the form of a Uzi, I find the talent in in showing how I can manipulate the system this much like. I, I'm a Nelly. I'm from the middle of XYZ. I can be this country grandma all the way to sing a country music. Like this is a mind game I'm playing. Cause y'all know what type of dude I really y'all. I mean y'all know what my what my roots are and how I really get down. I'm not no country singer, man. I'm a baseball playing kid from the hood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Little Uzi is from the Philly. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the heart of Philly. I'm I'm a rock star. I be getting diamonds in my head. You know what I'm saying? That's the game to them, you know what I'm saying? And I think the older cats sometimes have an issue with that. They don't really see it like they said, like you selling out or whatever. But I'm like, they sold out too, man. They was they was they was dancing for Adidas and they was dancing for Diodora, and you know what I'm saying? They, it's a different way. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's in a in a different way. And I and I look at it like as myself because I am now. I'm the I'm the new old school. So yeah. I got to a point where I was, you know, I caught myself dissing a lot of these young rappers because I just didn't understand it. But then yeah. I had to question myself, well, when my people was in my shoes and let's say I'm going up, I'm listening up, I'm listening to Easy and NWA. Well, my parents, well, they were probably dissing that too because they didn't understand it. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of a generational thing and I'm just at that age now. So I got to, I had to check myself because I don't want to be that person that's just cutting myself off from the the new way, the, the new music. Because I boycotted the radio in 2015 because of the substance that I was playing. I boycotted yeah. But then I realized, and it took me years to realize that nothing's going to come from like disconnecting myself with the younger generation, especially when it comes to the culture and rap. There needs to be some kind of unity.
disparity between the old schools because they just gonna look at me and be like, oh, you old here, you don't get it. And I'm looking at you, man, you youngsters ain't about nothing. You know what I'm saying? So this needs to be some kind of some kind of unity between the old school and the new school. Because the oldest rappers in the old school, they can really learn something from the younger generation. Because the younger generation now is on the internet, they technical savvy. Soldier Boy can put out something on YouTube and get out to the masses. You know, that the, the younger people know how to entertain the masses and they know what where the attention is. They know how to get the attention. The older generation, they might come with they come with substance, but now they time is the promise passed, but they don't know how to get the attention like the younger generation. So I think if we can have like some kind of unification. You, you get the, the younger generation to connect with the older generation so the older generation can now still put out some of that valuable substance through the, the younger generation's audience. Makes sense, makes sense. What you got, Doug? Man, y'all said it all. I just don't like these mumble rappers. That's I all. can't stay here. That I became a, a thing. I, I saw a clip yeah. of a young boy. A young boy was was rapping his verse, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so they they showed the clip. He was sitting down in a chair in front of a mic, and that mm -hmm. shit sounded trash. It sounded like some jibber jabber. I'm like, well, this is what rap is today. Yeah. And that, but it was just him. So somebody was videoing him sitting in the chair. You didn't hear the, the music. All you heard was him rapping and that shit. It, it was mm -hmm. it was trash. I didn't know what he was saying. Nigga looked retarded. And then they fast forward. Now he's in the studio or he's he's next to the engineer and they're playing the finished product and that shit sound fire. And I was like, oh, this is what rap is now. So the yeah. boy's cold, man. Boy, I, the, the, the young, thing, young boy's not cold. I think I think a lot of the success that some of these artists have now is really the success of the producers, bro. Yeah. Young boy, young boy. See. We don't have that. We don't have that energy, man. Like, like, like our parents ain't have easy e energy, man. But we had that energy. We had, we had that that energy of that aura of that era. Like, we don't have that energy. So it's like, ain't no difference between bone. Ain't no real big difference between bone and migos. The only difference is the energy. Like these young cats can't get in the bone. Like, like, like we got in the bone. But they they really doing the same back on each other double time spitting bone might be a little more harmonious but but Migos be singing too that's the same thing but the energy is different you know what I'm saying so NBA young boy man I'm not a big fan but I just I just be getting it because you know what I'm saying I think you have to see how the kids react to it first oh no they love it yeah we gotta see like them like either watch video of them at the shows. Or see young people actually, you know, jam into it, and you'll get it because you'll see that energy. You see, like, right. you know, we don't, we don't know how to bop, we don't know how to bop to that. You know what I'm saying? We trying to catch mm. our our, but they on some, they on whatever they, they on. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, yeah, oh, we ain't popping. We on a whole, we on a whole different rhythm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we ain't, so we ain't popping Molly all day, bro. I mean, that's cool too. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, but it's, you know, I'm like, I, I, I catch their vibe vicariously. I'm like, okay, I can get it now. I, I couldn't get it at first because I couldn't see it. There's no way for me to get it. I'm from, I'm from Easy E and M too. I'm from Humpty Pop. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? DMX. They don't, some of them don't know what DMX is. You know what I'm saying? That, Besides that, the dude that, on it. That, I can't understand that, man, because you got some of the legends. They don't even know some of these youngsters. They can't even tell you a Tupac song or a DMX song. <laughs> That's kind of disturbing, you know what I'm saying? Or a big, uh, easy, uh, easy E or a, a, a biggie. And the, so what I'm saying is the legends that were here before, they not getting, to me, a lot of them are not getting the credit they deserve. Like when it was the whole Migos and Bone, Bones, yeah. Bones are the legends. They've been doing this since Band-Aid Boys, 1988. And they, mm. they, they, have a, they have a style that they gave to the world. The Migos come out and just cause they get a little, you know, they get, they got their quick money. So they already saying yeah. they're better than everybody. Yeah. But to me, it was also, yeah, they have a different type of energy, but the content was also different. And I think it's like, with, I'm old school, you know, I'm back when we were sagging off, we wore baggy clothes and all this stuff. We were sagging off, yeah. it was different. We had, we had, you had a pager, you had a cell phone, it was different. And the new generation, to me, I mean, I think the masculinity was taken out of this younger gener generation. So I'm still trying to respect something. It's hard to respect something when I've yeah. seen what's purposely being done to it. You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you know what? I hear that a lot, and, and I got a question though. Has 
it has is the masculinity purposely taken out of this generation or has this generation just reverted back and and picked up some styles from back in the day because we all know trends uh re get recycled i can i i vividly okay, remember back to the 70s, right? yeah we're growing up in the house you know digging through the crates ohio players eyes the brothers uh, uh, you know, but, but see, I, I'm with you. Them, them boys was wearing some questionable I've shit back then. It was a fly though. back then. I, I, I see the truth. Yeah, but the difference. But the I difference think the intent was different, though. That's what I'm saying. I the, okay, the, the okay, difference okay. between Teddy Pendergrass and 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 and, and let's say Offset, whichever one. I don't want to make. I don't. I'm, one of the Migos. Let's say that. Mm -hmm. Um, is that Teddy Pendergrass was a damn fool. And it was he was <laughs> purposely you know he they was, not though. No, no, I'm saying, and he was he was doing it purposely, like this was to separate himself from the masculine men. He like, I now nah, them them boys over there, them them tough boys. I'm a lover man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a, I'm a prize to you beaches. Yeah, tell, you know what I'm saying? About the Isley Brothers, That's like Prince and Rick James, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me about but the Isley Brothers, Brothers shit. Isaac Hayes, man. I remember the album cover. Isaac Hayes was shirtless with a choker uh, choker chain on and some tight pants. And and, and yeah, but it, I'm saying yeah. It, we, it was for the bitches though. It was I for mean, the Migos. Migos ain't they doing it for the. Oh, so oh, you saying the new generation doing it for the niggas? Yep. Now, new, new, <laughs> and not yeah they are but even not yep. even in, not even in a in a in a in a salacious way or not even like in a in a fairest way is that we used to we used to be like i got this kite jabos on i got these these guest jeans on you know what I'm saying? baggy pants my dicky suit hard that's they dicky suit and it's like bro your dicky suit is 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 body boy clothes, man? Your your dicky suit, like y'all yeah. don't have anything that's masculine, and and that's the that's the the great pork myth. Like, not saying that y'all not masculine and y'all don't have masculine energy, but y'all got fem y'all got outwardly feminine energy, and that's just strange to us. And we we feel like we know what that leads to, you know what I'm no, saying? No. And we seen what it's to. Did anybody question Cameo when he did a video in a jock strap? That wasn't even a here. That was a, uh, what's that thing called? That's the thing that the witch collar wear, man. The, the, Speedo the, was on? Yeah, no, nah, I had like a, a, a this padded. This like a jock strap with a cup, bro. I know what a cup looks like when I see one. Yeah, it was, it's, I forgot, I forgot the name of it, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big piece that, that dancers wear. I forgot what it's called. But anyway, yeah, that boy's crazy for that, man. And he painted it red too, man. But like I said, the energy was different, man. Like, the, the energy, but then in, in 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 defense of what you're saying, though, a lot of those guys were bisexual and gay. Okay, oh, wait, we talking about what generation we talking about? The, the new seventies, all the seventies, because all of them. I'm saying, I, 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 I'm not nineties, two thousands, two thousand tens, two thousand twenties. Ain't nothing new, bro. All these nah. boys that they've been telling us, <laughs> Puffy. They've been uh -oh. telling us Puffy mismatching niggas since the since the uh. Early the nineties, man. See, what I'm, I'm saying, saying is like, all that shit. No, but see, I'm, I'm saying like, I don't mean like, I, mean, I, 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 I can, I agree that it's always been people who have alternative lifestyles in the industry. You know what I'm saying? But the way that it was presented was different in different times. You know what I'm saying? Like, it to to the defense of one side, they pushed masculinity to the point where it was criminal to not be yeah. overly ma mas masculine, societal, societal wise. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know I mean, criminal men, like you were ostracized and talked about and, and put in a box if you weren't overly manly. You're right. And, yeah. 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 But, yeah. But now, but now it's in reverse. Now, if you're if you're overly manly, then it's considered toxic. You're a toxic male. It's toxic traits. Toxic toxic masculinity. Yeah. And you're being punished for it. So well, that, that was it, it, that's an agenda that was purposely created to demasculate and depopulate the black man. I mean, we can go deep down the rabbit hole, but I mean, like we were saying, you got you got grown men out here trying to play gangster, but they wearing a purse, skinny jeans, and they got their nails painted, but they got a tech nine in their in their pocket, like the craziest stuff. No, they got they got the they got the the the, the hammer in the in the purse, the man purse. Yeah, but, like, you don't get. 
I mean, you can get shot with somebody. I'm gonna get shot with a man wearing a purse. But, okay, but but you know a lot. Okay, so you know, you know you know the um the uh, Spartans when mm -hmm. they came when they came back from from uh from their battles, the women would shave their heads off so they can be act so they can get acclimated to having sex back with women again because they would go on battles you know two year round battles oh, okay. and, and it was. And it was it was known that they would you know it'd be just them Spartans you know what I'm saying they Damn, come, so they hit each other that. yeah man you can't you know do a, you can't do a two year bid without hitting a nigga that's I, what I'm I mean, saying I mean I'm not I want to get to the whole caucus mountain people I don't know you talk about it. I'm not I'm not I'm not questioning your your your, yeah. your historical fact check uh, uh, facts I'm not gonna fact check y'all look man you know I'm just saying but but what I'm saying is but I said today you can't that, go but, beat off behind a rock or something bro. <laughs> it's a it's shit. a lot of what should be enough to man a stick shit the memory right, of your wife my nigga <laughs> some think of something you know what and, and, and you pinky was war. back in Spartan times bro just the 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 bitch who was pinky in the village bro that's who you be enough to you like pink it I wonder what Dude. pink was the color pink was and I, I like in I like slimmer pink forty four not, not not bigger pinky. Am I not How the person describe... to watch porn? So I'm not like no, no one on the screen knows who Pinky is. I mean, we know man, Pinky. Is, I know man. Pinky is. Thank you. Okay. Now. Thank you. Okay. Now. Thank you. She went, <laughs> man. She completely different from what she used to look like. I but she's still yeah, signing autographs and getting paid. Yeah, I still hit her right now just because she she Pinky. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, you might want to get checked out afterwards, but yeah. Oh no, no, you, no, you got to strap on. Put put at least four clothes. Oh, me and Pinky. Yeah. I need to see the paperwork first, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, man. I can't see pink, man. Not now. She, she changed. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, but to to put a cap on the conversation or that part of it, like, yeah, it, it, I think that 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 energy, like it, the over masculinity, ultimately is going to cause for. It's gonna cause some things to happen. I mean, and everything is overly masked. Anything in excess is gonna pretty much have a a a, 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 a pendulum swing the other way eventually, right? right, right. So, so so it, right now, I mean, maybe on some thing. I'm mean, and I'm just theorizing right now. Maybe they on some. Maybe they is right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it got to go all the way over here where it's crazy. It's for it to be for everybody to hit. They snap like, hey man, half that gotta go, man. Cause I yeah, y'all tripping, man. And we just fighting that, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we need to get the weak ones out of there, man. Cause they, cause, cause that's just, no, I ain't gonna say that. That's too much. I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. No, no, no. You got a bunch of weak, look, man, I, I like, I look at it like this, man. We, you know, we got the younger kids coming up fifth grade, sixth grade, fourth grade. They watching these older rappers and they watching what they doing. Look at yeah. what's Lil Nas X. You know how many people yeah. that Lil Nas X done influenced? So we mm. got to look at like the, the our culture is not going out there searching for a little Nas X to put him on the front screen. He's they yeah. not the we're not the ones choosing these these rappers. We're not the ones choosing these artists. We yeah. I didn't know who the hell Cardi B was. I mean we're not the, we, we're not the ones choosing them. So you know I <clears throat> I know I ain't trying to say the wrong thing on your podcast, but I know who yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all know who's behind. Yeah. It. Yeah. And when you really want to speak the truth, that's when you try. They people try to shut you down because we know what's behind it. I think there needs to be a balance. You know, we got a lot of feminine, so-called feminine <clears throat> artists coming in, but they there needs to be a balance. I know you said over masculinity can lead to negativity, yeah. but and the yeah. over uh, feminization can lead to the deterioration of the masculine black culture. So I think the old yeah. school needs to come in and try to help balance it out somehow. Yeah. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. I'm, I'm watch this transition move right here. I, you know, I have to take because we had a button, a ding button when some when some great was said, but somebody, you know, saying don't be. Oh, I didn't you know, get the ding. The, I mean, if you want to you know keep it a buck, if you want to keep it a buck, you don't get the ding button because uh, my co-host refuses to roll to the studio anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I see the bag dropping everything. <laughs> Yeah, I had to move back <laughs> from Atlanta and he just refuses to come to the house. You know, I guess I, I, I was threatening to put hands on him and <laughs> him So, you know, I got a repetitive relationship. Uh, bro, you see what, you see what I'm rocking, huh? I, I peeped the Bobby Boucher, but that's... You see what I'm rocking? No, I had no beard, nothing, bro. I peeped you know, the Bobby I, Boucher. 
I'll visualize and run you over, bro. I'll visualize. <laughs> Look, no white boy in the manifest. There's yeah. no white boy on earth that can say they ever ran me over, all right? Yeah. Pause, but good one, pause. I guess I think. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, speaking of he's speaking about the podcast and you know, getting canceled. Um I know you said you were you were look you used to have a podcast and you're looking to get another one going. And um and we have been podding for I don't know, two years, three years, something like that. Uh I'm going on four years of podding. Let's see, four. I mean, you know, time flies. But uh yeah, sure does. but uh um the numbers in podcasting are so they're astronomical to the point where things that look that that seem unattainable or attainable. Because it's so it's, it's it's so vast, you know the 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 amount of people you can reach is so vast, and you can really pocket a pocket and just live there for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and and one of the stats I was looking at that that kind of goes in with this is Joe Rogan. You know what I'm saying? Being probably one of the most you know famous podcasters, one of the most well paid, one of the most paid podcast podcasters out there. Yeah. yeah, you know what his percentage of the podcast viewership he has. Was it overall five percent of the total total podcast? The total five percent, and he's the leader. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, it's so many niches that people go in, mm -hmm. and it's so many people that like. Let's say let's let's say you know dub niche is like you know what I'm saying I don't know, little feet, girls I don't know. Aliens. You know what I'm something you would like. You know, aliens with little feet. Yeah. You know, that's a lot. What no, you'll listen to it, yeah, but yeah. there's like millions of people who will just dip in there just because it's so random. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, he, you get that that's uh that's it's just a niche that it's a it's a niche in a niche, and it's like millions of those to the point where if you can get a percentage point of it, just one percent, you you kill it, man. If you can get five percent, oh man, you you murdering the game, you know what I'm saying? Because like the other ones ain't getting ain't getting five, they're getting three and two point five, you know. You know what I'm saying? So in that in saying that, does that give you hope or you know oh yeah? Because I you know, I was doing I did my research before because I when I was doing the whole podcast thing, and today when I started the podcast, it was like 30 something million people, 20 something, 30 million people, but now we got like 90 million people just do uh on podcast subscriptions yeah, yeah and like yeah. You say joe rogan got a big number and and what i'm noticing is uh, a lot of people are moving from the mainstream outlets the mainstream media outlets and they're going to podcasting now so mm -hmm. you know people that used to watch the news radio tv a lot of them are just going on they in the car you driving to work you put on a podcast you coming home from work podcast you out and about yeah. so it's, it's yeah. the in the convenience the convenience of listening to the podcast too uh it, it's making it's making the viewership grow tremendously so I think there's going to be a time where, you know, these viewers are going to outnumber a lot of the whole traditional um, media outlets when it comes to podcasting. So, and, and right now, I think it's a good time to get on it. You know, it's kind of saturated right now, but if you, you know, if you got a good topic and you know what you're talking about, it's a really good time to get on it because it's just, it's, it's continuous, it's continually growing and I, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Mm. Oh, watch this now, watch this, watch this. No, no, now, I'm plot. <laughs> apply <laughs> apply that theory to mumble rap okay apply that theory so why yeah. wouldn't it why wouldn't it be a, a super barrage of mumble rappers if you knowing that the Migo is like cause the podcasting is a long form song yeah I I can do these. I you uh, you let's say a good podcast is going you know four or five times a week. Man, I can give you thirty. I can give you thirty or forty of these a month. I'm 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 literally giving the same as a podcast. You know, so I'm giving you thirty. I'm giving you thirty songs every three months. You know, what I'm saying fifteen going to the album, fifteen verses going as, as features, or ten going as features and five going as you know, what I'm saying whatever. That's a podcast, man. Why would I? Why would I break that formula as a as a mumble rapper to go back and if I know I, and I know I can get paid to go back 
it'd be like, you know, saying hip hop started out in the park. We used to yeah, do, I mean, why would I that, go that, backwards? <laughs> that's a good question, but I'm gonna ask you, what do you value more? The content, the do you do you value like the the actual the actual craft and the content, or you value mm -hmm. more of getting paid? Now, me personally, I'm a content heavy person. I value the mm -hmm. art, the art, the art, the artism. All right, that's a word, artist. The artistic vision, the 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 ability, mm -hmm. the cadences. The, the, you know, I look at it from a, a a myriad of ways as far as music, right? But that's why I gotta honestly say that we are the are the fathers of them because we went through an era in the in the 90s, 2000s, where we was get money. We was get we was cash money, cash money, millionaires, just because of their name put them on. I don't True. Know. So we and it's kids that grew up that was born into that. They were born in 82, 85, 92, 95, 2000, 2000. So the music, the music they heard, they 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 parents jamming. Get money, you can be as good as the best. Uh, that's what my mama like. So I'm putting, mm -hmm. I got my mama's and my daddy's soul in me, but I got a different vibe. Mm -hmm. But I've also been fed this this tainted food. So we're we're a lot of we're responsible for some of what they for some of this music. That's why it's like I try not to. I I, I try I, I do it, but I try to be like hard on them because like mm -hmm. we birthed them. We we birth them and they 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 are they are our, our reflections in a lot of ways. We didn't birth them. Wayne birthed them. It started with Wayne. Yeah. It started with to me. You ask if you want to go back. It started with Lil Wayne. Even the damn skinny jeans started with Lil Wayne. <laughs> yeah, but if he you started, it, but, he started but, doing the skateboard shit with the little just the skinny jeans, and now that shit popped. It it was a fad. But if they, okay, so do you feel like okay, devil's advocate? Would you call Wayne a genius? Because if Wayne could be like, "Look, man, I'm 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 really head and shoulders above my contemporaries." If I can be, if I could be different, I think I think he did a very genius thing. Yeah, yeah. If I could be different enough to stand out to where now mm -hmm. I set I set the tone for the generation. Yeah. Um, cause I'm real. I'm real like a young OG. I was what, what, thirty eight, thirty nine. Hell no, nah, Wayne. Yeah, he's in his late thirties. Forty, forty. Yeah, Wayne forty. Wayne ain't that much. Well, hold on, well, hold on, hold on. Wayne probably finna turn forty. Wayne ain't that much younger than us, bro. I was in high school jamming the high boys, and Wayne was what two years younger than me. I'm forty. to finna be forty three. Wayne was in the high boys oh, okay. since he was twelve. So, but I'm saying when I was in high school like, jamming mm -hmm. Wayne, I mean I'm I'm sixteen, seventeen, bro. So yeah, Wayne a couple but, years younger than me. Yeah, so all that being said, that's what I'm saying. So he a young OG, man. He ain't the OGs in the game right now are Snoop, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Timberland. Them they in their sixties, man. They, yeah, they late fifties, early sixties. Yeah, 60s. they twenty years older than Wayne, and Wayne is the current artist and an OG to all this. So Wayne is a young OG. But saying that, saying, OG, I think yeah. I think Wayne was in a position where he was getting money mm -hmm. at a young age. And he decided to just be himself. Like Wayne wasn't doing nothing that other black kids in the hood weren't doing. As gangsta as black kids say they were, bro, black kids were skateboarding like the white boys. We just yep. weren't as good at I was skateboarding. Yeah. skateboarding. Yeah. I had a skateboard. Yeah. Bro, the whole, the, <laughs> half the clock was skateboarding, bro. I had trying the mares, to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were trying to jump the curve on the skateboard and, and you fall and the nigga, nigga gun falls out of his <laughs> pants, bro. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> He just had enough money to actually live and, and do what the fuck he wanted to do, bro. And he was influenced by skateboard culture. Right. So he got on stage he, rapping. He afforded his own freedom to be himself. Right. Yeah. And but what I'm saying, so in that in that same in that same breath, like it's been a bunch of rappers who came out in that era who stuck to that 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 same visual, meaning like Bow Wow was a little kid. He liked to hoop. He made one basketball song. He was done. You know what I'm saying? Like you would think he would have a basketball song every, every, every. Oh yeah, I was. I wasn't just being in like Mike. I wanted to hoop for real. You know what I'm saying? That's. But 
or the Romeo never went past what you know what I'm saying they never got out, out of they out of their frame. They always were studio. You could you you ain't you ain't gonna be surprised by a, a Lil Romeo song or a Gucci Man song or you know what I'm saying. Now you might get a raw song that you might get like oh man he really you know he, Freemasons okay I I got you you know what I'm saying or but you ain't gonna get too much from certain artists and that's why so they kind of stuck in their lane. Yeah. yeah yeah Wayne. Wayne kind of like might be a genius because he he already he's so young and he's been in the business. He see okay, this is how you this is how you become a great. You got to be able to touch the different. You know what I'm saying? What do, they can't do that. So let me just go ahead and just do what I do. And when it catch on, oh now I'm I'm iconic, man. Oh, but Wayne, Nicky, but, Wayne, but but Wayne ain't do nothing. The Outcast didn't do. That's true, because their originality was coming out in like 92, 93. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne ain't do nothing so, the outcast didn't do. But Wayne go hard in the outcast, man. No, they don't. Really that yeah, whole, what? really, really that whole, if you want to keep it a buck, mm -hmm. and 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 yeah. this is what fucked me up when I felt when I found out, when I truly found out, yeah, future was a part of Dungeon Family, bro. That whole Dungeon Family click was doing yeah. their own thing way before it was cool to do your own thing, bro. Well, I mean, See, no, no, no. Yeah. Future was, uh, he was, what's you call it? I think Rico, he was my little cousin. So he was there, he wasn't actually making music, but he was making music, but he was like the younger kid. They kind of, he kind of was groomed by everybody. And you're right, he was there. But what I'm saying is like, Wayne, like you can't, you can compare any one of Goody Mob's careers to somebody else, except for maybe Andre. But everybody's career, you can, you can like, oh yeah, he had this song like that, da da da. He did, he, you know, boom boom. He he fizzled out, you know. what I'm saying, Killer Mike is like a new Ice Cube, you know. what I'm saying, basically, he, you know, what I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, a big boy might be like a corrupt, a spitter who got jammed, you know. what I'm saying, you can't compare nobody to to Andre though, because Andre went from that. He's like, oh, he went out this world to where he was an entity. Yep, you know I what I'm saying. And I, and I feel you can't I, compare I, nobody to Wayne like Wayne the same way. You can't compare. He became an entity. He did, but I feel, I feel like without and, and and Wayne played a part in this young man's career as well. But mm -hmm. without three stacks doing what he did, you know, expressing his art how he did, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you know, young thug doesn't get that freedom to do to to express his art the way he does. I agree. So, but let me I ask agree. you this: Do you think? Do you think young thug like artists like young thug? You you know. You know, I'm not. I think I seen that man in a dress one time too with some black fingernail polish. <laughs> really, I did. But I mean, do you think he's being? Is do you think any of his artistic style is being influenced by outside force or outside entity? No, nah, well, I think I, that's, I'm trying to tell you. I think that's just him, bro. I think that's yeah. that's who he is, bro. No, nah, well, I think both of y'all are right. I think both of y'all are right. I think you're right that it's just him. And I think you're right that there's outside entities that will be like. Oh man, that's original and that's dope. But if we push this, we could put a we could put a thumb on this, and it's also like they know the outcomes of of situations. They're like, if we do this, we're gonna have 20, 25 of these, and we and I'd rather have to deal with these docile artists or these docile acts than deal with a bunch of more. Look what Easy E and them did. We had to deal with DLCs, Dr. Dre's, twins, uh, corrupts, dads. We, man, all badasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, you got crooked eyes, right? You got a, you got. We, we, I spurned rash casts. Look, look, man. The the list goes on of people who they spurned, because one person was like easy. Because Jerry Lawler, I mean Jerry, what you call it, and Easy got down like that or whatever. Now, if and I'm Jerry a Heller head, was behind a lot of that, but Jerry Heller didn't have his his best intention at heart. That no, man was about profit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Now imagine they kids, kids, man, is who running these companies who have been taught by their dads and seen how this can go. They've seen how they know how to burn out artists. They know how to how to keep artists in in the cup and, and tuck them away, like a Tiana Taylor. And no, a Tiana Taylor, nothing but a Whitney Houston, nothing but a a, 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 a what's the that other one they tucked away? Mariah she Carey. She ain't Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey, bro. That's, that's what I'm saying. 
they when she was they knew when she was 12, 13, she had pipes. They was like, this oh, she's yeah. gonna be one of the ones. And they tucked her away. She ain't had no props to come out. They ain't have a all they did was sit here and groomed her for all them years. She didn't blow like Mariah. She didn't blow like as far as the, you know their fame, but the way they they uh they uh cultivated her is the same way, you know what I'm saying? Uh I think Keisha Cole won them too. No, no, what's the one R. Kelly had? Uh Keisha Cole R. Kelly for a little minute. The one, the one uh who Michelle, K Michelle, she's another one they tucked away. It's a bunch they doing a gospel oh, all baby. the time. I, I be getting K Michelle and Keisha Cole mixed up, bro. Yeah. But anyway, saying all that is that um they know that a young thug is gonna spurn a more docile act. I'd rather mm -hmm. I'd rather put money behind Young Thug and deal with his what he got through. And at the end of the day, I can always be like, oh yeah, he he a crime mama. Remember, throw him in jail, man. To even he's, put more fear in the next ones. We knew he sold drugs when you he said he won't address the hide the stick. Pause. Yeah. Yeah. But then he also said he wore the dress because he saw the shit in the store and it looked fly, so he put it on. Yeah. But, and then you have you have you have certain you have certain you have certain artists or certain men, certain people who are just discovering themselves. You know what I'm saying? So their art reflects their discovery. And if their discovery goes through different realms of, of preference or whatever, that's they that's that's they that's they path. I'm not saying it's wrong or right or good or bad, I'm just saying that's their path. And that's relatable to more people. There's somebody who's like, no, nah, man, just this way, or we're like that that yeah, extreme. But, but at, at the at the end of the day, who's the one pushing the narrative for people to get this experience of life? So somebody's pushing the narrative that I'm having in my life, and that's what I'm gonna perceive, and that's gonna be my experience. I'm gonna rap about it. So if I got right. people pushing the narrative that all men are wearing black men are wearing dresses, that I'm gonna come up experiencing that in my life. So my my narrative that I'm now expressing to you in the musical form was being influenced by somebody that was manipulating my narrative. So I think we need to go back and, 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 and let's, point, let's pick out the source of what's manipulating our narrative to the point where it's changing the experiences that we have in our life. Because it's gonna change that experience I have in my life, therefore it's gonna, that's gonna um, define or define what I'm gonna be rapping about. But if this person wasn't here manipulating the narrative, would I be rapping about something completely different? about being a doctor and a lawyer and an yeah. astronaut, or I'm gonna be yeah. rapping about trapping because I'm only seeing that shit on TV. You're right. I mean, yeah. My job. <laughs> <laughs> but and to, and I, don't, I, mean, I agree with you. And when I think about it, I'm like, okay, well, what, cause, okay, so I'm gonna do a, a, a correlation. When people get sick around me, I be mean, like, I, I feel some kind. Of, I don't, I don't feel like I'm attacked, but I, I get confused because I'm like, I don't get sick often. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't get sick very often to the point where I only be you know what I only be knowing what to do when I'm sick. So I just go to sleep for an hour or six four and then wake up better most of the time. And that's like once every, and then usually it's like something crazy. But once every two years, you know what I'm saying? I had COVID for a day and a half. I just couldn't go nowhere or whatever. But anyway, so uh uh that's that's how uh it's a weird feeling because it's like you don't they don't know, they don't know I don't know how to how to how to uh put it in words, but at the end of the day, it's like 15 things stacked on each other that's just helping. You have the, ent the entity that's, that's pushing it, that's, that's that don't, don't care about us, right? Mm -hmm. You have us being damaged and, 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 and lied to. You have us trying to deal with being damaged and lied to, but not getting the proper help. So, if, so further indoctrinating some of these bad habits and creating new bad habits, you have a whole other entity that's coming in and putting in, you know, imp impurities and perfections in our neighborhoods, all these things. But yet and still, we still have people who have minds like us on, on the screen who can see it and be like, boom, boom. So like, damn, how come we can't all link, link together and just work together? How can the ones like us can't all in together? 
and it to me it all it all ends up being it's more of them than it is of us. So we I was can't thinking move. The same thing. Yeah. So so <laughs> but, so we can't <laughs> we can't move overtly. We can't move overtly because that's like if we all now they we gotta move like they move covertly. Because if we move yeah. overtly, they, it's, it's more of them than us. They 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 masses gonna out gonna drown out. You know, what they'll saying? stop. Like, they'll run us over because there's only a handful of us against pretty much. Yeah, like you said, the masses. So, and I and, and it's like you know, I don't know. It's like we we some lambs, and then we surrounded by wolves. They and we wearing the lambs' clothes. They gonna know. So you pretty much like disguise yourself, blend in, in order yeah. to change the system. You got to kind of go covert and within the system in order to change it. Like that black man who dressed up like a Klansman or something like that to go infiltrate, you know, yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. kind of be strategic with it. I know Dubs and they like, man, Boogie tripping, man, because Boogie's the most militant, <laughs> won't do it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, but I, for real, because I, 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 I 100% be on some like, because I, I would like, it's like being sick, bro. I don't even be understanding how we don't be thinking to ourselves, let's do it together. Like people will, will work apart from you mm -hmm. doing the same thing you're doing, honoring the same code you honor. Because we're taught capitalism, man. We taught, you know what I'm saying? We taught individualism, like vicariously and outright. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so we be thinking like, man, I'm gonna get mine. I'm like, bro, we all doing the same thing. And we like, you can only serve so many, bro, before you're gonna be extended. I think I think especially the average black man is on survival mode, and if we stay on survival mode, you can't really see unity, unity if you on survival mode. But yet you don't see you don't see anything mainstream kind of showing how black people see unite. They don't want that, and you know we can go. I can say the powers that be or whoever don't yeah. want that. So that narrative yeah. will never be pushed in mainstream media for our younger kids to see or even hear. Of black unity, because once you talk about black unity, you're now a threat. Because cool. once you talk about black unity, you're talking about the black dollar. And once you take that back, our dollars are putting their kids in college. Now, once you take that money out their pocket, you got to target them a little bit. You know what I'm saying, yeah, that's cold. That's cold. That's a cold lick, man. My my that's question for the for the past ten years has always been, how come we, as in black people, don't run and own hip hop? I feel like when hip hop first started. Yeah, we 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 needed the help of the uh of the Leah Coins uh to represent us mm -hmm. and get us our deals. Mm -hmm. And from from that point until now, we have billionaires in hip hop. If you yeah. just name the big three, I'll call them the big three, which will be Dre, Hove, and, and Puff. <laughs> they're, 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 I don't know if Puff's still a billion. No, you see, you pick, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But you, but, but fuck, <laughs> fuck that. The big three, Hove, you know, maybe Dre, maybe Puff. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm, I'm missing some names. But even yeah. past hip hop, the L.A. Reeds of the world, the Baby Faces of the world, yeah. uh, you know, shit like that. Then your boy who uh started up United Masters. Uh, what's his name? Steve Stout. He, he, the Steve Stout to the world, uh, the dude that was running 300. Uh, I forgot his name, bro. We oh, have coach. Nah, coach is on three. Nah, the oh, dude. Q, Q, QC, QB, nah, QC. It's, a, it's, a, it's another dude who actually who actually put together 300. But uh, it's like we have enough moguls in hip hop where we can own hip hop. We don't need Leo Cohen still running around with the three with the 360 deals. But it's yeah. like it's like the guys who are our big three, as I put it, yeah. they 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 got their success, they got their money, and then they still, you know, let the bullshit system still run and go. Ah, that's the I answer right there. Right. We could definitely do it on our own. We got the internet, you know. We that's what I'm saying. Own. Now we we we, well, we get, the word we get, he said. We got keeping because 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 you know, I know this might be an unpopular opinion. A lot of yeah. New York people, they they praise Hove. My question yeah. is, and then and then when you say this, they say, "Oh man, Hove has done so much for for black people as a whole," and he probably has. I'm not questioning his philanthropy of what he does for our culture, but my thing is, 
what has he done for for rappers for hip hop? He knows what he went through when when he was making his rounds trying to come up with him, Damon Biggs, and mm-hmm. Rock Rockefeller was in a position. If I roll with, with with your narrative that it originated in New York, so let's just say at one point in time, Rockefeller was in a position to kind of dictate what happens. Mm-hmm. The one entity that was the defiant one that probably was moving towards we are the talent, we should own our craft and own this. They they Ooh. pushed them out, bro. And that's Dame. They pushed Dame out. Hove came on top because Hove is gonna play ball. And he still, yep. in my opinion, allowed the people who don't look like us to dictate mm-hmm. our culture and our music. And that's why we're where we're at today. But <laughs> I agree with them, you know, because they don't got our best interest at heart. They going how think about this. They can put they can they can put millions of dollars behind our music and we talking about rap genocide. But once we talk yeah. about something that has to do with gay or uniting black people or fuck the cops, yeah. we sh- yeah. sh- we blackball, we shut down. We can't talk about that. We can't hurt a but, gay person's feelings, but we can talk about killing another brother 24-7. I but I think I think that. One the, the 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 main issue is the well, okay, they, they built an infrastructure, man. So they have an infrastructure that how most most people are feeling like I'll have to, to in order to do it myself or do it mm-hmm. without them, I'm gonna take a loss. And I could do it with them and and quote unquote try to infiltrate, but these are the things yeah. I have to do in order to infiltrate. I can't go in there talking about I can't, I can't even Toby right now. You know, if you, if you heard his music lately, he's been saying nigga and all this, you know, he's been kind of, but look mm-hmm. what he's doing though. He doing movies with X, Y, Z. He doing, you know, commercials, you know, for the, with Charles Barkley. And I know who was that with uh, Ocho Cinco, you know saying? Like, like the individual might feel as if they're given an inch to get a yard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know my spirit, but <laughs> then, I'm sorry, go ahead. I ain't mean to interrupt. Go ahead, bro. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna say, but in the same breath, it's like they want they 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 still want to get in there to to change it from the inside, but you can't change it from the inside. It's an institution, it's a system, it's it's they it's just a mold. It's like, man, we this is this is this infrastructure. This here is you gotta go create your own infrastructure, man. You can't you, you can't yeah, get on well, the internet. Well, we were we were we gotta trying, have something else. So so we we were at a point where we were trying to 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 create our own infrastructure, and some of the participants of that group that were trying to do it got shut down, right? They got some bullshit yeah. put on them. So and, and and regardless of how you feel about these these young men, I'm finna mention, but at a time there was there was a a, a a a meeting between what was it? It was Jay Prince. It was a. Uh, it was it was it was Jay Prince. I think Puff was involved. I think Suge was involved. I think P was involved. I want to say Dame might have been involved or might not. And they were trying to move to a a a situation where we were united, and we were gonna you know when I say we I mean like like black people who run the culture. Oh, yeah, set up their own distribution or whatever it was, and and between those those guys who were sitting in that meeting trying to figure that shit out, uh, there was a mole in their group because I think they were trying to do it by coast. So you had like like Puff on the East Coast, they you had to, on the West. Not the, the South Coast, the West Coast, the East Coast. They were trying to yeah, pull yeah. it all together, and they were trying to create their own distribution because that's mm-hmm. really what you need the labels for is the distribution piece. Uh, distrib- you know, the, dist- the distributors were giving labels deals. They were like, fuck that. Why are we giving all our money to them? We can do this shit ourselves. We can be our own distributors. Niggas in the South had been found out the game and was doing their own shit. And uh, okay. there was a mole within the group. And all I'm going to say is I don't think Suge, J Prince, or P was the mole. So but you know Suge got locked up after that. Suge got locked up after that. They tried to lock up J Prince. Because it, yep. it, it, I feel like for at least two years, bro, every other night, Jay Prince on Fox News because niggas sending dope to the compound. Uh, niggas trying they to, try to find that man so many times with stuff that wasn't his, you know. Well, you know, yeah, some of it might have been true, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, but it, it, but it, but but that's what happened when I when they tried to make that move, and there was a mole in in in, in the midst. Same thing with Rockefeller, bro. Rockefeller, Rockefeller as a label and a movement, there should mm-hmm. still be a Rockefeller Records to this day. And uh, you know, you 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 listen to to depending on who you listen to and and what side of the fence they play on. Uh, Dane was a menace and a problem and a cancer, but. Out of that whole group that he helped uplift between Rockefeller and Murder Inc. and uh the FUBU guys and all of that, no, none of them really are still moving and, and moving movers and shakers in his business outside of Hove. I feel like I feel like man, I can't wait to see the Rockefeller doc. I feel like Hove sold out everybody. I feel like he sold out Dane. I feel like he sold out Biggs. Biggs went to jail. Mysteriously, when that shit went down, Biggs went to jail, had to do a bid for like two years on some bullshit uh, marijuana shit. Dame got X'd out, and Hove, the only one made it on top, and him and Lior on the uh, birth this 360 shit. The 360 shit is a it, is birth from Dame, I'm sorry, from, from Hove and Lior. And Lior got his validation from Hove. I might be wrong about all of this. But that's just <laughs> how I deciphered it, bro. I mean, and, and there yeah, should not I think there, there should hand at play. There should not be my bad. There should not be a Rock Nation brunch, and Dame Dash is not there, bro. You don't get Rockefeller Records without Dame Dash. Fuck what Ho right. say. Fuck what Big say, bro. You do not get Rockefeller Records without Dame Dash. Dame Dash is one of the greats, man. You saw what happened when Dame went to charge no more, bro. Was Dame went to charge, Rockefeller went to shit and 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 folded. It's just crazy that they 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 were so they were so in in they were so in tune with each other. It seemed like you know what I'm saying. It's like they were so in tune, and then all of a sudden it was like they not. And to, and to add on to the whole thing, which with the collaboration of the different, you know, coasts getting together to try to make that one big connection with the East Coast, West Coast, the South Side. Yeah. And like you say, I mean, I'm always going to be, I'm always going to kind of revert back to the same narrative or the same topic, because regardless of how much money, you know, these black artists got, you can be like a Kanye. Kanye got so much money, but as soon as he tried to do something for his own people, they try to put this man in the crazy house. So or as soon as you try to do something that's going to unite, once you can unite that many, that the, the, uh, the East Coast and the West Coast and the South Side, you can unite it and you can actually create that umbrella and literally start taking back what's yours. It's very threatening to other people and they're going to do what they got to do to stop you from doing it. And they might make it look like it was one of your own doing it and it really wasn't. They might look like it was one of your own people trying to do it. Just like you know, uh, you know, you, you you can look at oh, a rapper got killed by another gangster. For what reason though? Was somebody behind it? Did he get paid? You know, was he paid off to do this? And I always think that one of the big one of the biggest problems also is that it's the rappers or entertainers that's doing it, right? Because it's like just be, like. KRS One is a dope rapper, man. He's a he's an intellectual brother, but he's not the one that should be making that. He should he's the he's the megaphone. He's not the president or the 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 the, the board member or like you know what I'm saying like, you know, over time as he got older, he became more of a of a board member where he okay, well, my conversation ain't about this topical thing it's about these things infrastructurally in the in the system that's messed up not that brothers are getting killed like yeah brothers are getting killed but if i if <laughs> if i make brothers being killed the war cry mm-hmm. then in 10 years they're gonna be like well those brothers got killed so it's working knowing that no matter what happened even if it stayed the same in 10 years the crime rate is gonna go down we experience this every every year of human existence. That, well, not every year, but for the most part, as the years go down, crime rates go down. I mean, murder rates and crime rates go down because we get we become 
more civilized. They have more infrastructure in places where it's not wild. You know what I'm saying? So of course you have a town that had a bunch of vagrants. The first five years is going to be bad. As you get uh, houses and homes and people can work and get money, it's going to be less crime. So well, if my if my battle, the crime the crime rates and all that shit fluctuate with with society and 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 like uh, finances and shit like that. So like right now, I think the crime rate has went up because inflation has went up, and so life right. like life essentials is just harder to obtain these days. And because of that, that's why your robbery rates are going up, your crime rates have gone up, shit like that. I mean, but that, that's consequentially, and that's like, I'm, well, you're right. But I'm saying like the crime rates haven't went up, like they went up in like a, a small, in, in, in a small, in a, not in a five year spike. And even if I, if like right now, all the crime rates, even though they might've went up in the last, whatever, two, three months, it's lower this year than it was last year at this time. And, and damn everything. Houston is like one of the, uh, the what, seven largest in the country, and they got like the fourth lowest crime rate. You know what I'm saying? Like, Houston, Houston? I yeah. mean, because it's kind of like the wild, yeah, wild west out here. Yeah, you got to fact check that, bug. I don't think you're right on that one. Man, they I'm 100% that, they, sure. They passed that open carry. I remember when they passed that open carry law, you got everybody and their grandma carrying a pistol. I've been People open carrying you know, before the law. <laughs> we are <already. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> We do what we had to do, so. Houston, Houston, I know. I mean, yeah. Houston crime rate is number fourteen in the country. Okay, fourteen. Important, and that's, that's and that's and that's the seventh largest city, or I think it's the seventh largest city. You know what I'm saying? The fourteenth lowest. We we do country. have a we do have a deterrent though. What's the deterrent? Nigga, it's Texas. Everybody got a gun. What you talking about? That's Run what I'm about to say. Want to. Yeah, they don't got guns like this in New York. They got guns like this in Texas. Soccer moms, yeah. soccer moms you got nine. In New York. Yo, the, so the soccer moms got the same forty-five that the gangsters in Cali hide and have. Soccer moms got that yeah. shit in they in, in they uh Michael Kors bag, bro. They're not carrying no twenty twos and three eighties now because they got trained to kill, so they carrying a bigger caliber. You know, we in work. Texas. I got the AR in the trunk at all times. What are you talking about? Oh, no, no. I, I, banana clips. But, you know what I'm saying? But that's that 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 would deter on a certain type of criminals, and, and like you said, if you have inflation, if you still have low poverty areas, that wouldn't make people stop robbing. Um, people start stealing. People ain't people ain't you know saying it's because she might have a gun. I mean, they ain't, man, I, I'm gonna be like, well, she, I ain't gonna try to get no money, or I ain't gonna try to steal because she might have a gun. I'm gonna get a gun too. It is a deterrent. <laughs> so when you look at when you look at states that have stricter gun laws, prime example, look at yeah. Chicago. Chicago has the strict Chicago has a strict set of gun laws, bro. You you it's yeah. it's like you gotta have a FOIT card to get a gun. It's a cool down period, all kind of crazy shit that you gotta mm -hmm. do before you can legally purchase that hoe. Mm -hmm. Yet and still you, you see what the crime rate is in Chicago. You see how many uh deaths they have by shootings in Chicago. Yeah. And they have stricter gun laws than they do in Texas and 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 you know, like Arizona and shit like that, where you can open that's why though. What do you mean? The reason why they got strict lung laws because they they seen we got a problem with guns. Like if they, if they I don't didn't, think they that's didn't, what no saying no a hundred percent. So you said so you telling me I ain't got no gun problems or my gun problem is is is, is mediocre and I'm putting the strictest ones mm -hmm. in. No, nah, we got a gun. Bro, this is talking about Chicago. They Chicago is the home of the gangster, bro. The GDs in the West College was in the seventies. You think they ain't have gun problems in the seventies? The GDs and all of yeah, them games they've been having. Yeah, but those little Saturday night specials, but you know. Hold up, we can go before that. You think they had a problem with it? the Tommy guns with Al Capone and, yeah. and and Lucky Luciano? They had guns in Chicago since the fifties and the forties, man. Yeah, they got strict gun laws. How you they got that? Like, all, they, all, all they do is go in Chicago. All they do is go across the state line and buy their gun and come right back, bro. That's yeah, but I'm saying, but, but so. What you're saying is, but the and then there does. are there, oh, there, oh, there, oh. There, there are other the uh, other factors involved in some of I'm that saying shit. It, yeah, especially you're when you get that, to like, especially when you get to like, uh, the, the gang wars and shit in California and LA, uh, in like what early '80s or some shit, where mysteriously just boxes of Russian-made AKs dropped in the hood. Nah, how you many, got how many hood man, niggas you know? know how many hood niggas you know got to connect? Just get a a, 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 a a gang of Russian AKs just dropped off in the hood, bro. And that's fake. That's not fiction, bro. You know what though? Or, and I'm I, I like to play devil's advocate because I just I just had a purchase today, man. I got 
I got these two, these two, these two jerseys, man. And if I told you I got two Michael Jordan Bulls jerseys stitched, how much do you think I paid for them? Paid a grip. Okay, let me get let me give you one pre pre only one prerequisite. There's no Nike check on it. That's the only thing. Because they bootleg from Sound Okay. okay. But that's what I'm saying. I'm asking. They, don't, they got like this one right here. It got. They don't got. No, it, not, they don't have this. Uh, mm -hmm. the NBA patch. Oh, okay. That's it. it. Stitch. That's it. But but it's this. This is a, this is the thing. I got it over there. This is Celtic, but it's just like this. Stitch. You know what I'm saying? Authentic jersey. Just don't have an NBA patch. Because when they because when they when they get them from China, they don't come with the patch. Like they they have to they stitch them in the U.S. That's why I said you could say made in the USA. They took they had to keep the stitches on, on on one side, get it, boom. Oh yeah, it's made in the USA. They ain't saying it's hundred percent made in the USA. They're saying it's made in the USA. But uh and that could be partial, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh I don't know. It's it's it, yeah, you're right. Y'all right. Is this boot, it's, bootleg, it's, boot, bootleg jerseys and foreign arms? It's two different, two totally different uh situations. No, nah, not really. Not, not not to repeat, not to to me and you, it is. No, but to one people thousand percent, bro. People, people who deal with arms, people who people who deal with it, that there's a there's an entity of people who sell arms to each other that are not government entities. They're private mm -hmm. companies that make the guns, and they sell to the highest bidder. So the people who the in between between them, to them, they feel like I, I I can get a box of unfinished Russian because you if you think the, the the guns they getting on the streets. Are the fully loaded guns or the fully, you know, nah, these are probably quote unquote knockoff guns too. You, it's many a time when you've heard somebody, oh, somebody put a gun on me and it jammed. Like properly put together guns don't well, jam. That's not you true. can always have the black market. You got both, you got, people are always gonna put stuff on the black market. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, but when it comes to the guns being pushed out, like, like you was talking about, how all these guns appear in the hood it's oh you know it's so you always gotta look at the hidden hand behind anything it's always a hidden hand behind it i think yeah yeah and, and like I you agree, said I we didn't that. make those guns we didn't make that thing yeah i i agree that 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 there's an element of you know there there are people who want to put them in there but once again there's so many elements that you're not well that it's not being talked about when you're saying that la because la is a port city you have a whole, you have a, you have a whole Chinese, three or four different Chinese mafias in China in LA. So, oh, yeah. so there's, it's not far fetched to think that a black dude who knew a Chinese dude, and they, they've been, they bringing the guns for them. They ain't got to do with the government. They, they mafias are sending guns in. So hey, go ahead and kill the triads. The triads kill the so and so. It's documented that it was the CIA. First off. Documented. That is true. It was documented that it's they were. Documented. I mean, I think this CIA. is black extermination. You know, that's black documented. Extermination. So if you could, then that wasn't bringing those guns into the suburbs. That was bringing in the guns into the hoods, yeah. the same hoods where they were opening up gun shops on every corner, with the same hoods they had liquor stores in every corner. Why? Because if you can have the people commit genocide towards themselves by giving them the tools, you don't got to take yeah. the blame for it, and it's taking the, yeah. the problem off for you. And now you can go ahead and infiltrate those neighborhoods that the people committed genocide with each other at. you can infiltrate those neighborhoods yeah. raise up the uh, property value of that land and put who you want in those houses and it's going to be beneficial to the person who yeah. behind putting those guns on the street and and every time i hear that i'll be like that's why we have to move covertly and not overtly mm -hmm. because if this, they figured out it's enough people who don't think in the same band as we think to be like, if I give, if I put a thousand guns out, it's a numbers game. Because me and you could have got the guns too, right? Some kind of way. They dropping them in, in, in places. And, you know what I'm saying? We, we might not get them, but we can have access to them. But it's, mm -hmm. if it's a thousand guns and we give 900 dummies the guns and a hundred, and a hundred, you know, forward thinkers, that's too many people dummies with guns, man. That's too many, and, and you know, not even done. People, people who don't, who can't see past a certain level of the way things are working, you know, what I'm saying so. Again, going back to infrastructure, 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 man. We need a, co a covertly built 
I guess like the boule, right? I'm still there. Oh, that's not that me. I'm like, oh man. The boule. We need like a we need like we need a boule type situation working in conjunction with other boules, like not just one. Like, you people, mean a secret like, society of the boule? It is the, the secret the societies. Version, yeah. The black version of the skull and, and bones. We need like 12 of those, man. I think we got a couple of them, bro. I just think that yeah. they work in conjunction with the whites. That's true. I mean, well, you got, you know, just like you got black Freemasons and all that stuff. Yeah. They working in conjunction with them. What's so you know, now you, go, you know, going you, backwards. You know what it like the, uh, the, the black charter of the Freemasons. I think if you're a black Freemason, you, you operate. I don't need the Freemasons coming after me. You operate under the, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, rules, not rules, but the charter of, yeah. what was his name? His name was Paul something, bro. I want to say Paul made some, but I've been drinking, bro. But uh, the the black Freemasons are the only Freemasons that have their original charter because uh, yeah. uh, the 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 Scottish Rite Charter got burnt during the Boston Tea Party, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know that. So question. So I, 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 I always go back. Mason left him. But I, I go back to the same point to be like, well, dang, man, how come we can't come together, man? I, th I think we how? do. They, they, they got a lot of black organizations that do come together. But every yeah. time we try to come together, we get shut down. If you look at, you heard of the, uh, the NF, the Not Fucking Around Correlation, the group of militant black men and women. The what? The, the not, not fucking, fucking around, around correlation. And that's the first thing right. I've heard of that, bro. Oh, you got to look them up. I mean, we are talking about thousands of black men and women going in, all suited up in black, ladies, all carrying AK forty sevens and AR fifteens, going into communities of predominantly Ku Klux Klan and shutting them down. They were when, whenever they find out they got a clan rally, these these militant blacks they go into the the, the town that the clans the clan rallies being held, yeah. shut them down. They so big and powerful, the cops not even messing with them. But the new I got I got y'all gotta look it up. I gotta get you oh, the information. The, but the, the new uh, organization got locked up. Yeah, I'm gonna say they made a new a new uh, law. I was reading about I don't know if it was them, but there was a, a group they were saying when they when they reclassified the uh, terrorism laws. To, for domestic terrorists, they had already queued in on certain black groups that weren't that weren't even militant groups. They just were black groups, and they were like, "Why is the why are these black groups that are you know they they grow food or they do you know what I'm saying why are they um, labeled as terrorist as domestic terrorists?" And they were like, "Well, they have ties to said group, or they have ties to said group." So that's the uh 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 a, a derivative of you know whatever. But that's crazy, man. That's Yo, crazy. I, not, they're not fucking around, quick. What is that? Yeah, they're not was fucking around. Rapper. Rapper. He was a rapper. Yeah, I mean, get this information. Y'all got to look. The not, it was not, the not fucking around, NFAC, not fucking around correlation. He was on the they're news and everything, around. man. And they they uh they put a false charge on him just to get him locked up and try to shut down their organization. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. Like, that's a, that's not like one of the most niggerish groups that you can be a part of. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a car carry member of the not fucking around call. Yeah, yeah. Speak, speaking of niggerish things that I I, I kind of love, man. Are y'all familiar with all deaf digital? All yes. deaf digital? Yeah. No, I haven't heard of that. Okay, okay. All deaf digital is um a deaf. It's I think I know Russell Simmons is the is the founder of it oh. or the funder of it. Russell Simmons. Russell the Simmons still in Bali. He might be safe to come back from Bali since that uh, what you call has been been lifted since you know the twenty fourth has passed and he came uh -huh. out unscathed. So he might be able to uh, come back now. But um, it's 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 a it's a um a, a network. A, a, they have a YouTube channel. They have Spotify. I mean, they have, but you know, pretty much all the 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 the, the comedians. That have been, you know, making motion in the last 15 years of coming out of there, like Kevin on stage, uh, uh, uh Sh Shahir Moore, uh, Doughboy, 
uh, Billy Sorrells, uh, just you, Brandon. Lo I mean, Boo Capone, uh, Craig, uh, Craig Smith. Uh, they had Cancel Court. They had Roast Me. They have all these shows. They have, um, but uh, man, they literally just take things that we do as you know in our culture. And they turn it into, into shows and games, okay. and, and it's the most. It's the like they have. They have a show called a show called Roast Me, and they just have like they have like maybe twelve comedians in a room, in a classroom, and they got a, a moderator teacher, and they just sit around and just roast each other for an hour. You know, <laughs> I gotta check that out. I mean, and literally like for an hour, and it's taking turns. You hey man, your mama, blah 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 blah. You look like so and so. They they had guys with no legs on it before. You know what I'm saying? Comedians mm -hmm. that, that are paraplegic and they going like you know they going, going off on them. going off on each other. And he's going and he's firing back. Women, men, Chinese. I mean Asians. Uh, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of uh slurred Ti was on there. I know it went viral when Ti went on yeah. there. And they wrote they wrote as soon as he walked in the door, they're like, uh oh, he's gonna tell. Like, <laughs> yeah, but uh. They, but anyway, they have a bunch of shows, and most of their shows are literally like things that we do culturally, you know, and they just package it, format it, and put it out there. And I think that 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 is an example of what we should be doing, and not. Mm -hmm. But but like I said, if, if I come with a check, if I give you a check and be like, hey, if you if you come and do what you do over there, over here, I give you mm -hmm. fifty million dollars, and most people are gonna be like. They and then even, yeah, and even some people will take it and then realize, man, I tripped out, man. Right, you keep your money, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about them. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna ostracize them. The Dave Chappelle's and the Kanye West and the Dame. We're gonna ostracize them because they realize that taking that they money is is is, is working with them. You know what I'm saying? That's that's, that's wild. Well, I yeah. definitely got to go, go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at this. Boogie, I envy the fact that you are bold enough and courageous enough right. to uh use Beijing. Uh, Mr. Williams, <laughs> we, 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 we've talked a lot tonight. I want to hear about. I know uh, when we started out the podcast, you talked about uh, you were an artist yourself, uh, creative yourself. So I want to uh kind of dig into what, what do you do, bro? Okay, well, you know, um, when I first started my original podcast, it was called My Baby Moms in 2017. I created that podcast when my daughter was born because at that time, I was already dealing with my second, you know, crazy baby mama. So with that, you know, I learned a lot from that, and that was just kind of giving a blueprint, the one, you know, one-on-one -on -one blueprint for baby daddies on what to watch out for, the pitfalls and all that. So that's when I created that one. And then... um. That lasted a little while. I did a few episodes with that. And then I moved on to just kind of showing people what to watch out for, highlighting if they need. I wasn't uh, giving any kind of legal advice, but I was just giving my experiences and what I went through. So, if you know, it can help out the next man that was going through the, the same thing with his baby mama. And then I was actually giving out game on what to watch for when actually choosing the right baby mama. So I was doing that with uh, my baby moms in 2017. Then I moved on to doing some other stuff. You know, I was, I was doing collaborations. I started a nonprofit organization. I created music. Uh, you know, I even picked up the guitar, started playing the guitar. I painted. I wrote eBooks. So I mean, I, I've done quite a bit. But now I'm coming. Back, it's, it's kind of circling back to my main focus, and that's just kind of helping out my community, doing something to support the people, and showing them a different way. Now I'm on like actually showing people how to get the reparations right now through government contracting. So we still waiting for the reparations, but it's out there. You just got to know how to go get it. And it's through government contracting. So right now I got a small community. We've got a little mastermind group we do every other Friday. And I'm showing a lot of my people how to get it through government contracting. Hey, let's stay there with the reparations. So when you, when, when you talk about reparations, getting your reparations, can you kind of walk us through that process of what you actually mean? What's it, what 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 that process looks like, and even some something as simple as how do you even qualify? What do you have to prove to say okay. that you 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 should receive reparations? Well, yeah, and with that, you know, 
Um, they're look right now. You have to prove it to me. You got to prove your blackness. Like that, you know. You have to prove what what's your descendant? Was your descendant coming from a slave, or were you from another country? Were you coming from Africa, or Jamaica, or do you or you just are you, is your lineage coming down as you know slave owners that were here in the United States? So was your great grandmother a slave, or was your great grandfather a slave? They're gonna look back at your lineage, and then they're gonna look at you, and that's what I know how they're deciphering right now on who gets reparations or not. Because if you listen to Tariq Nasheed. Uh, he's the one that started the, uh, I guess, like the indigenous black man is supposed to get the uh, the reparations. So they're talk. I mean, I'm, I'm not getting. It. They talk about the reparations, about passing the law. They've been talking about it in California. They're still talking about how much. Some people are saying 250. Some people are saying 350. But it's still in the works to pass this this law for reparations. It's been in the works now for some years. I'm not, even though uh, you know. I'm expecting it. I'm not waiting on it. There's other ways for us to get our reparations. So let's say if you have a, a small business, you need to look. People have to definitely just stop focus on the federal level and they look at their state. Every state is allocated to spend a certain amount of billions of dollars with small businesses. So if you have a small black owned business, you are owed some money because by law, the government has to spend a certain amount of money with small minority black owned businesses. Well, you got to just go do your homework. You got to Type in your state, type, you know, type in procurement contracts, type in your state after that. And it's going to show you what your state can give to small minority owned businesses. And then you have to pretty much do what your due diligence and you have to pretty much align yourself to get those contracts. So let's say in your city, you can get a hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract for six months for cleaning the bus terminals around, you know, cleaning the bus stops with a pressure washer. The little contracts out there that are for you, you can easily go out there and get your money, but you just got to put yourself in alignment to get it. You might you need to go out there, get registered. If you have your LLC, get your LLC, register with SAM.gov, get your EIN, uh, you know, get your bank account set up, accept credit cards. Like you can set yourself up and then go into your city, your, your city's website and figure out how, how can you register to become a small minority owned business. You can go on there, fill out an online application you know, prove that you're black, you're a small minority owned business, and then start and then start actually going after these contracts. And it's really about going, networking, calling people and, and, and sending out emails. I created a little capability statement and I'm just contacting the people who are the ones spending the money. So uh, here in Texas, you can go through like the Harris County, they have procurement agents and procurement officers who are the ones that are, are, are allocating this money out to small businesses. You can send them an email, get all your ducks lined up, and then shoot them an email stating what you do, and then you can get lined up for that next contract. And then they have it where you can bid. They'll put out a, a, a solicitation. They'll, hey, well, I need a, I need a bid to, uh, you know, do the landscaping around the part, the local park. Now, you know, they might put out a bid, so you're going to sit there and do a proposal. The best bid is going to win. So if you say, hey, we'll do the landscaping for 8500 a month, you got the best price, you win that. Now you just want a contract. Well, you go hire somebody else to do it, pay them 2000 keep your money off top. That's your reparations right there. Yeah, I just went through, we, we're going through this. And when we went through this with, uh, I don't know if I should say the name. We'll just say there's a, there's a, there's a company that services uh, our, uh, our area. And mm -hmm. they, they, basically, they basically got in early. And you know they've been the only they're the only provider of that service. So they have maybe four or five districts, and mm. a lot of the districts are not happy with their work. But there's no other providers, right? But they have a person of their uh, the, the, the 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 person who the person who put them in place is on the board. So that person keeps keeps saying, "Hey, put them in, put them in." You know what I'm saying? They're getting a cut. <laughs> they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I didn't want to say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. are, so it's like, are you, you already know that, the nature of the business? Is there too much uh, information? No, no, no. Well, I guess, I guess they, they, uh, they do a, a abatement, landscaping, and and uh, they do abatement and landscaping, basically. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but, you know, it's 2023, you know, and say probably maybe in 2000, you can just go and say, Hey, I did XYZ, blah, blah, blah. But now, like, they got 
iPads and they got digital, you know, reconnaissance. So you can, so when you say I went and did X, Y, Z, and they're like, you know, I live in the district and I see that you do X, Y, Z, or the picture you send to me is not of the place that I told you to go. But, you know, saying since yeah. I have this, this history with, the, with, with, with the whatever. So yeah, it's, it's contracts out there, bro. And like, like, I agree with you. And we, we received some contracts in another, in another arena, but it's a hundred percent based on relationships and talking to people. Mm -hmm. and, it's who you know. Yeah. Basically it's yeah. really about relationship with Keegan and who you know, and yeah. don't get me wrong. This, this there's always going to be some level of corruption, uh, you know, going on and everything. And, and I, I want to really, you know, help crack down on that because a lot of stuff is going on under, under the table. You can still, you can still go out there and get your money, but you do yeah. got to be aware of that. You know, there is still some corruption going on. Oh, yeah. I had this, I don't want to get too serious, but I, I had this conversation with somebody else and they were telling, we, they're talking about uh, border control. And they were like, they need to stiffen up at the border. And I was like, no, nah, man, we need to go to these businesses, man, and, and put a, a, a stiffer fine on them. Because then when they come in here, they ain't work for themselves, they work, they work for somebody. Oh, yeah. And that some, somebody is going to discount on the labor, put more in their pocket. But at the same time, their in infrastructure strong enough where they pull their money together and they have advantages for because they don't have uh, the, the, the credit and rental history that people who are from here have. So I got a clean slate. Mm -hmm. So I, you know what I'm saying? So they're they're being industrious in that way and having that other advantage. But and we want to attack them at the border. Like, no, what's that going to do? That's a waste of time. It's a numbers game. You can't put enough people to stop them. It's too many of them. It's a whole it's country. Many, yeah. yeah. But if you do say we we can't be going to these businesses and the whole staff is illegal, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna find your company so and so. If you do that again, oh, yeah. so that so that company gonna be like, well, I might as well go ahead and either raise my prices and hire competent, I mean not competent, hire people who are documented. Mm -hmm. I'll make less money, but it's gonna cost me more if I don't do it. You know what I'm saying? And is this a different a different I, I think that's that's fast. You gotta you gotta you gotta hit them in the pocket to make them change. So I definitely agree with that. They'll, they'll they'll change when you when you mess with their money. Well, the but problem they they look into like straight capitalism. The problem you're gonna run across with that is you know, uh, and I hate to be this person, but you know some of your lawmakers, people we vote in office, they're taking kickbacks from mm -hmm. private businesses to make sure these private businesses can still operate the way they've been operating. So. You know, it, it's it's all about money. You know, I got enough I money. I, I'm making enough money off of whatever this loophole is that I'm that I'm operating through. To you know, hey, I'm a, I'm gonna donate to your to your uh campaign for your office. You know, and because I donated to your campaign, you go look out for me, even though you're supposed to represent the people of your district or state or you know whatever. Yeah, my interest in who's lining my pockets. So yeah. like it, but, but once again, it goes all the way back to what we said earlier. That is, even though you can have the corruption, the 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 constituent in the district or in the city or in the county has to even know about the issue. So if it's more people who don't know, or don't have a don't have don't have an inkling about it, you will have less people that's going to inquire. Uh, our our boy, uh, Reginald Reginald Moore, who 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 exposed the uh Sugarland ninety five, right? He was yelling that every day for like 10 years. Every single day, like in the morning, he come and said, hey, man, you know, they got them bodies over there. Da, da, da. They, you know, said to the point where we almost tired of hearing like, yeah, Mr. Reggie, we understand. You know what I'm saying? But every day he's saying this, he going to board meetings on camera, blah, 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 blah to the point where now Mr. Reggie, RIP, long gone. They got a, a, a podcast, a national podcast about it. And the first three, four episodes are his. Are his are, so what I'm saying is about about what? Explain exactly about what 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 happened. About he okay in Sugarland, uh, they used to use uh slave, not slave, uh, prison labor to 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 build Sugarland was basically used. I know, right? Pri yeah. So, uh, 
some of the slave some, some of the uh, prison labor got buried and uh they had their unmarked oh, graves. Okay. And I so remember they, that. Yeah, you gotta, name, I, you gotta put a name on it. The the biggest culprit was the Imperial Sugar Company. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fort Ben ISD went to go uh buy some land to open some a new thing. And once again, Mr. Reggie, which is a person who knew about this, a, a community active was uh Reginald Moore was telling everybody going, it's like y'all can't y'all can't dig there, it's bodies there. And they would like shoo him off. And he every time he would come, he would he would go everywhere he could go. He would wherever he went, he would tell people about that. So when they went in there and dig, they found some bodies. So they, first day they found six, next day they had found six more. At the end, end up found 95 bodies. You know what I'm saying? It's where now it's the grave site and they couldn't dig there. But that allowed, I'm saying there are people who are champions out there. But, but the people who they're championing to don't even know of the issue. So it got all the way to where the only reason they stopped digging because the contracted company didn't deal with decomposed bodies. It, it wasn't like they came out there and, and Fort Bend ISD is like, no, nah, they had a contract company digging like, hey, we got bodies out here. We don't, you know what I'm saying? And I'm assuming, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure if I'm a company and you're saying there's bodies out here, your price change. Absolutely. <laughs> and when the price change, somebody say, why we can't dig? Like, it, like it'd be different if it's like the, the whole situation is is a, a care about what's going on. But I'll be feeling like it's, it, it, it messed with the money. So they're like, oh, my hold up, man. Messing with the money. Why? And now you got to explain why. Oh, dang. What that man tell y'all that, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, but, Imperial Sugar still on the on the on the on the shelves to this day. And they the biggest culprits of it. You know, some of their empire was built off the back of some of those people who were buried close to their to their to their factory. So, and then how you and how how are you gonna how are you gonna you have to you know the the, the you know the price tag on trying to fix that problem. It's gonna you be great. It's, there's no price. It's not gonna. It's so big. They're not gonna. They're not. They can't fix it. You have to have people come in and DNA, and then how you gonna find that answer? These these people. How you gonna match their DNA with somebody else? You have to go through records to find out who. And these unmarked graves. They probably don't. Man, I don't even know if they could figure out who the people. They have to go to records to see. Okay, well, who's in the jail? And then of course you have people went to jail. Who went, all kind of man. It's impossible. Have it's you, impossible. Have, have you seen the list of how many major corporations make profit off of a prison labor? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, it's just crazy. Like, like, it's just crazy. So, same and, thing and, with 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 Chase Bank. You, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, bro, when they found when 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 the when the boat hit port and it had so many tons of cocaine on it. Mm -hmm. And you come to find out it was a vessel that was owned by 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 uh, JP Morgan Chase. And you didn't hear nothing else they about it. They got so much money and they bringing in there. See, all, but the, the, all these conversations become moot to me sometimes because then you say that and you be like, okay, you see all these examples of how they can unify to keep the money going. And then mm -hmm. when it comes and when it comes to us, and we got the opportunity to do the same thing. It's like, oh no, nah, man, we gonna we gonna go after the money. What do you mean by that? Even, like, give, give give me an example of an opportunity that we had to do the same thing. I'm saying we have we have we have we every day as as a, as a community have. How about this? How about this? There's no reason why Texas Southern University should be the most prestigious or one of the top performing schools in Houston. It should be in the same conversation with rice and academics and sports. But the alumni and the community and even just they don't value TSU the way they value rice and it shows in their dollars. There's no other metric that you can say like that 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 you U of H is valued 
And there's an element of government funding that wasn't given to TSU that has been given. So I can I can add that in there. But even still, like Michael Strahan could 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 every day be on ESPN or anything saying TSU is a great university. Michael Strahan could 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 coach or could could steer players to TSU. He could tell he could, he could inf- try to influence his 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 contemporaries. Hey, y'all go coach TSU. Well, hold on. let me step yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, me and you both experienced yeah. this uh, in our search for being collegiate athletes. Living in Houston, born and raised in Houston, playing ball mm-hmm. in Houston, and me and you mm-hmm. both ran into the same pitfall. Even though, yeah, you can say me and you were were, were entering this phase of our life around the same time. You you maybe uh came out a couple of years before me, mm-hmm. but when we and it, it, it I think it's just now getting a little different. But there was a time TSU, and this is just only on on a on a sports level. Yeah, they weren't even trying to recruit kids young talent out of the city that's true all the talent that was in the city they really weren't weren't they 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 didn't have an agenda to recruit us yeah they let us walk on but you know for us trying to be recruited trying to get that scholarship i got more attention from colleges out of the state than i did from tsu in my own backyard where i know I had enough talent to play on that team and be a, and be a scholarship athlete. I'm pretty sure you had enough talent to be on that team and be a scholarship athlete. So that's some of the thing too. I, you're right. And and what I'm saying is that, but that's not on the, that's to me, that's not on that current, that's not on the administration that was there when I was coming out of high school. That's on the 40 years before that. That's on when the guys in the fifties and the sixties graduated and they moved on and never, you know, when the guys in the seventies who graduated, the guys in the eighties and the guys, and my high school coach went to TSU. My, my, well, yeah, he went to TSU. And when I was like, hey, you know, I'm just gonna let him like, could you get, could have put a word to me for TSU? It's like, ain't nobody that I know when I was in school was still there. So he, so, what I'm saying is the turnover and the connection to the school ain't even there for us to do that. You know what I'm saying? Which is. Like, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, bro. No, no, you good. You good. I, I was just saying, go say that, that. That's one of the, like, it's so odd that our HBCUs, we treat them like, like, like ex-girlfriends, man. We, we love them when we're there. And when we show, when we tell our friends about them, like, yeah, I used to make that bad bitch over there, boy. I used to fuck that, you know, blah, blah, blah. but we don't, feedback into them we don't just i i know for a fact now the tsu's football team i don't know too much about Mm -hmm. the basketball team or the track team but on the football Mm -hmm. team they have uh some coaches on that roster that are uh houston uh uh you know houston natives those are some guys on that on that coaching staff that are from houston went to the same high schools that we went to and new staff yeah, the new staff. I know. I know. I, okay, I yeah. personally, I, I went to school with like, with like two or three guys between Worthing and Madison, who are coaches yeah. on that TSU staff, and they're yeah. actively, you know, uh, making a push to recruit guys and talent out of Houston. Look, yeah. like, like I said at the time, TSU wasn't looking at me. I, I got I got looked at from A and M, from Florida State, from Louisiana Tech, places like that. And and it wasn't because I didn't have the talent. TSU, (laughs) they seemed like they didn't want to recruit out of Houston, bro. And it wasn't just me. You know, we had guys on my Worthing team. You know, I had a, we had guys on our Worthing team that were actually some some good guys. Like uh, we we had a four star recruit that couldn't get recruited in Houston for us TSU and Prairie View. He went to Colorado, ended up going to the league. Yeah. Uh, You know, we had another guy, same situation who uh. Couldn't get a look from Houston from TSU. He got looks from U of H, uh, A and M. He ended up going to Howard. And, you know, well, he ended up having a, a short stint in the league, and now he is. Uh, he came back to the city, and he is yeah. the head coach for your Jack Yates Lions. You know what I'm saying? But that guy's that why we lost home. so bad to Worthington. Oh, that's why. That's why yeah, yeah, Worthington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worthington because they, they, they yeah, seven yeah, yeah. shot. He seven yeah, yeah. shot the game. Shout out to the, shout I out knew, to the homie. Like, shout out to the homie Mike West, man. Mike West, Sunnyside legend, uh, Chickahoe, Texas, Worthington alumni. 
a cold, cold ass guy. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, you know, he he was good oh, enough. Oh, yeah. sab they sabotaged the game, so he went to work. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, years. I wouldn't say that. You know, I'm just saying that. You know, as far as I can remember, you know, being an uh, alumni from 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 the great uh, school in the club known as Madison High School, and then transferring to the Checkahoe, aka uh, Worthing Coats, uh, we religiously beat the shit out of Jack Yates. Now you a little old, you a little older than me, bro. So I don't know what they did in the late eighties, but I know in the in the late nineties, uh, <laughs> I know in the late nineties, <laughs> uh, you know my my word my my Madison Marlins and my Worthing Coats, you know we put foot to ass in them uh sore ass Jack Eight lines. I can I can do the patch. I I know for sure 97, 90, 96, 95 that didn't happen, but you know ninety eight maybe. But anyway, now um. Um, what I'm gonna yeah, say yeah, is, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. What I'm gonna say is, like, that's a good thing, man. I just hope, like, you know, you know who the AD is, right? I'm not trying to show TSC, but you know, the AD at TSU is, right? No, I don't know who's AD. Uh, Kevin Granger. He's oh, been a point, he's been a point time. guard. Yeah, yeah, but he's from Mississippi. But um, I would assume that he's recruiting in Houston, though. Yeah, I, I think, I think. Oh, well, of course it is. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. As far as recruiting, also like I know that TSU, some of the smaller schools, they don't recruit out of Houston as well because of the talent level. Because it's like that's a waste of trip, that's a waste of money to even go to try to get Mike Singletary out of out of out of uh, Worthing because he got Alabama, blah 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 blah. I don't have but four scholarships, and they ain't, I might have two scholarships and they partial. Or I don't have you no, know, and I don't have the infrastructure and the money, like like Alabama coming down here is like, hey, your mama finna move to Alabama and have a house too. You cool, so, me, but but to refute to to rebut that, I'm not gonna say. Look, if I know I'm up against all of that, cool, but I'm not gonna not offer, like I'm not gonna not present myself to these players. If I'm a coach and I'm trying to recruit, yeah, I'm 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 gonna go out and I'm gonna try to recruit the best talent I can, and if that best talent that I can recruit to send in my backyard, I'm gonna find a pitch to give to that kid to get them to to come to my to come to my my my, my program. All I'm right. gonna start in my backyard first. You a, you a coach, Dub? Coach Shaw Dub. Lewis. Shaw Lewis is a, who who like Vince Young. Vince Young, Vince Young, right? You 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 coach TSU. Coach. What do you what are you telling Vince Young? And you and you and you got twenty thousand dollars. In your budget to recruit each player. That's your budget to recruit. Whether it, that's, that's trips, that's you know how because all that stuff costs money. You got twenty thousand. You gonna spend your twenty thousand on Vince Young or this kid out of Appaloosa, uh, Mississippi? I'm gonna who, do the same. Kind of like I'm gonna do the same thing that A and M did for me. I'm gonna roll out the red carpet. I'm gonna invite you to my program. I'm gonna put your name on the screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through my 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 facilities. I'm gonna walk you through my stadium. I'm gonna bring you to my coaching staff, and I'm gonna give you my pitch of what I feel like I can do to help you get to that next level, both athletically and uh and and educationally. And I'm gonna pitch the fact that we homegrown, we in your backyard, you at home, you ain't gotta leave your family. You can do all of that because Vince Young was in Houston more than he was in Austin. If you want to keep it a buck, so I mean so, I get it, I get it. Now, ain't, now, 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 <laughs> now, 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 now. No, no, but I'm no. This some real shit though, cause you pretty get fired like a motherfucker, man. How am I gonna get fired for it? <laughs> because for, you how, wasted how, your money, man. How am I gonna get fired? Look, when I went to A and M, bro, that wasn't that much money. It was some gas money and the A and M uh uh bus, Kingsville. And, oh, I'm talking about you, talking about, uh the main campus. Yeah, Texas A and M, nigga. It was it oh, was it was more than one. I think it's that. I'm talking about the Texas A&M. I ain't talking about no yeah, subsidiaries yeah. of it. I ain't talking about Prairie View A&M. I ain't talking about ain't nothing wrong with uh, that. Uh, none of that. I'm talking about Texas A&M. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They came and they picked me up. They took me down there. I stayed in their facilities. They didn't have to spend no hotel money. We walked through the stadiums, the workout facilities. This is where you will play. This is where you would stay in the dorms. This is your coaching yeah. staff. This is your position coach. All of that. That didn't cost them $20,000. If I am no, a coach of, but it costs them though. Okay, but if I'm a coach, that's even more. If I'm a coach of TSU and you live in Houston, it yeah. really don't cost me shit to to pitch my program to you. I get it. My facilities 
might not compare to OU, might not compare to Ole Miss, might not compare to LSU, might not compare to UT, might not compare to Alabama, but I can at least give you my pitch. They well, not okay, even well, I'm giving saying it, homegrown talent the pitch, but that might be now. No, I'm, I'm talking about then. No, I'm saying what I'm saying is when, okay, so when when Bobby Bowden came down to Houston, right, to get his uh his DB, I was in the hallway. I was in the hallway, coming. I don't know why I was in the hallway, but I was in the hallway going towards the gym, and dude tapping my shoulder. He's like, "Hey, man, you know what Rush Durden is?" I was like. Uh, yeah, yeah, boom. So whatever. He he scoops this guy up. He takes him uh to 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 lunch. Talk, to, you know, takes him and his mom to lunch. Talk to him. I uh, 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 does what he does. Next weekend, flies him out to what you call it. He sees his jersey, you know, with his name on it. Has a video presentation. Da 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 da. Woo woo woo. Right. When TSU goes to Reginald Dirty. If they go to him, what they gonna do? What what can that what can they say that's gonna even be? Cause they can't even put the jersey out there. They can't Why even not? Do, they, Why because not? because uh, the cost of me doing what half of what they do is gonna my budget is twenty thousand. This judge is two million. So if I do if I spend a thousand on a player, that's an incremental that's 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 one percent or that's what that's a bigger percent of my budget that I don't I don't have why why it, am I spending why, why am I spend, why am I spending money like you 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 are a product of 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 the south side of Houston or the north side of Houston bro mm -hmm. it ain't it, it it don't cost me nothing to invite you to my facilities you you wore number two in high school I scouted you it don't cost me nothing to invite you to my facilities throw your name on the on the big screen Welcome you in. Have a a, a a TSU jersey number two with the Velcro mm -hmm. Williams on the back. You know what I'm saying? And and walk you through my facilities and give you my pitch, bro. That don't cost me. I ain't gotta fly you out. That don't cost me nothing. So you don't you don't you don't think that this is about money? Oh, you don't I think, think that, you don't I, think I, that... I think I think in the grand scheme of things, it's about programs. You know, with, if I'm if I'm a kid and I'm looking at TSU versus Alabama. I'm looking at the prestige of Alabama. I'm looking at, at 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 Nick Saban. I'm looking at the facilities and how they fly me out because they do have enough money to fly me out. But if I am sitting in Heron Clark, Texas, it don't cost you nothing as TSU outside of an invite and some lunch and your hospitality to try to lure me to your program. What I'm saying is you what but you but you may I feel like you're not taking into account that. The money I'm talking about is when I talk to Vince, Vince Young about anything, I'm not talking about football, man. I'm not talking. Why I'm talking about football? You think I? You think I don't think Vince Young can be successful at football at my program? Well, let me ask you a real question. Yeah, I don't think but you don't think that Vince Young think I'm be as a recruiter. Yeah, as a recruiter of talent. Yeah, yeah. What is your pitch? Because at that time, at that time, there was no NIL, so. I can't legally yeah. pitch. To, no, no, so listen, at that time there yeah. was no NIL, so I can't legally pitch to you how much money you're gonna make at my at my college through boosters slipping you envelopes of money under your dorm room. So but tell I'm telling me, you that though. What to, no, you're not telling me that because the so moment why, you, why am I coming in? The moment the moment you tell me that yeah, if you come to Ole Miss, uh, one of the perks of being at Ole Miss is that the alumni is gonna slip envelopes of money under your doorstep at night. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I if I bring you out to Ole Miss, I'm bringing you out to Ole Miss, I want you to be in all of my facilities, even though we in the middle of nowhere, I want you to be in all of my facilities, what the program looks like. Yo, man, that's what your name gonna look like on that Jumbotron in our stadium. Hey, yo, that's your jersey right there. We already got it picked out for you. Yeah, I might have some nice little lunch for you, some steaks, some shrimp, some lobster, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I might um, I might pull your tea lady to the side and tell her, hey man, look, I can get you a cool little secretary job over here at uh you know Which is illegal. Well, that's illegal as well. But I'm just but I'm saying that's not your pitch. If I'm bringing you to my program, every college I went to, the the pitch was what that program 
could do for me. But you're not a, a five star recruit, duh. I'm not a five star recruit, but I'm saying so. As why a I'm not? Recruit, I'm not going to pay you, but I'm going to pay the five star recruit. I, I I guarantee you that the University of Texas, when they recruited Vince Young, did not come and say we going to slip you envelopes of money under your doorstep. Now what? The of course not. But they did say. Hold on. They did. Now, oh, oh, oh. now what the University of Texas did do once they acquired Vince Young was go back to Madison and hand out a shitload of academic scholarships as well. So when Viz Young chose to go to, U to UT, there was a shitload of academic scholarships that came through Madison for, for some of those kids who qualified that went to UT. That was one of the perks so that you came. Don't think, you think that was, that, think that was, you think that was Madison doing, UT doing, or Vince doing? I definitely don't think it was Vince Young's doing. So, we so can X that one out. Hold on. So you, you. What I'm saying is, I'm just, just, let's be honest. You think that Vince Young or any high end five star recruit goes to a school, and the conversation is not is not discussed about, or it's not as some way relayed the message you relayed that this school is ten thousand a month. It's twelve, like like. If you don't feel like that happened, then you're not being you're not being realistic, bro. Why do you think these five star recruits go to Tennessee, go to Colorado, go to Washington State, go to man, ain't no reason you can't get nobody to to leave Hawaii to come to Florida State on no prestige, bro. You can't get nobody to leave to leave Oklahoma to go to to to, to Fresno State over no prestige. I don't have to leave Oklahoma to go to Fresno State over prestige because Oklahoma Sooners prestige is way higher than Fresno State. But I don't people, have to five star players from Oklahoma go to go to Fresno State. Five star players what five, from what, 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 what five star players you know that had a bid to go to Oklahoma that didn't go to Oklahoma. They just wanted to go to Fresno. Several did. Name so you one. feel like every, name, name oh, one. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you feel like every best recruit in their state stays home? I never said that. What do you? I never said then, that. I'm saying, are there five? Did Deion Sanders go to school in? I mean, did, did um Randy Moss go to school in Virginia? No, but Deion Sanders went to school in Florida. Yeah, but Randy Moss didn't go to school in Virginia. Did did okay. Michael Singletary? Michael Singletary, Michael Singletary didn't go to U of H. No, he didn't. Where did he, he go? He didn't. He went to Baylor. Okay. Why he went to Baylor instead of going to UT? You think it maybe was he got a better offer? Maybe he got a better offer at Baylor than UT. Maybe when he went to Baylor, maybe when he went to Baylor, the pitch that they gave him at Baylor was better than the pitch that he got at UT. Or maybe as, Baylor as, said, a, as a as a recruiter, a part of, as a recruiter, a big part of your job recruiting. Is selling your 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 organization or selling your program, bro? If you don't feel like if you don't if you don't if you if you don't if you don't recognize that there's money involved in big name players going to big name schools, then the conversation is moved and, and pointless. Because oh, I, never said, no, I, never, I never said that. I never said that, that's that the, part. That is the that's one of the main factors. Because why why if if there's no there has to be a conversation of this going on because it goes on it went on to the point so bad to where it's like man hey we gotta let them get their own money because they they it's they changed the rules let me ask you this one yeah. very important question and then we can move on mm -hmm. why don't you go to william jewel and not tsu because everybody tells you at the um recruiting out of mississippi so why where, don't you go camp, to william jewel and not go to tsu Again, because because TSU's admin, they were recruiting out of Mississippi. But so what I'm saying so, is, so I'm what not I'm, a five star recruit. Hold on, though. hold on. It don't matter if you're a five star recruit, two star recruit. Don't matter. What I'm it saying does, is, going. what I'm saying is, we not even on five star recruit level. All right, your, your two star yeah. recruit, your three star recruit is not walking into a college, yeah. and they're pitching you how much money you can make per month by 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 you know backdoor money first off secondly okay you went to william jewel yeah i went to paul quinn yeah not because these schools had a better pitch than tsu but because these schools had a pitch and tsu didn't even attempt and that's all i'm saying okay 
That's it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. It wasn't even an attempt, bro. Yeah. Okay. Look, you can't but, get uh, mad. You, you you can't get mad. I said okay. No, 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 no. You can't get. Uh, I'm not saying you as you. I'm just saying you as a. You can't get mad, bro, at Halle Berry and say Halle Berry stuck up and boozy because she won't talk to the average dude working at FedEx to make forty five a year. If you didn't even attempt to spit game to Halle Berry, that's all I'm when saying. When you gonna see? When you gonna see Halle Berry? When you gonna run into her? When I when I when I when I put myself in in the in the in the in the area of where she gonna be, if I put you myself, can't, you can't even, you ain't got the money to put, you ain't got the money to get in the area that she's in. See, she ain't got the money to have a conversation to get a conversation with Vince Young. You gotta go through X Y Z. You gotta have X dollars to get to X Y Z. You ain't got the money. You can't give X Y Z five thousand. That's half your budget. It, yeah, Look. it costs. To all I'm gonna say is, all I'm gonna say is, I, 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 I was at Madison High School, bro, when Vince yeah. Young was was uh was 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 a freshman. No, I wasn't at yeah. Madison, but let me rephrase that. I was at Madison when we had four star recruits going to LSU and all of that. Yeah, and uh, I can tell you for a fact, Texas Southern University never came on practices. Other schools did, but TSU didn't. And it don't cost you no money to leave third ward, get in your car, and drive to Heron Clark to Butler Stadium to see a to see a guy play. And to pitch I, I agree. your program to I'm a saying, guy yeah. during third period. That's all I'm saying. If Louisiana I, I feel... Tech, if Louisiana Tech can come to Worthing and they can pull me out of second period algebra, and I go to the coach's office and I talk yeah. to the coaches, yeah. tell me why TSU can do that. I mean, I tech has, has a bigger budget. That's a D1 school. Again, um, tell me why a TSU coach can drive from third ward to Sunnyside and talk to yeah. me during second period algebra, bro. How much money does that cost? But you're saying it costs money. I'm saying... You, I'm you saying brought to, up the money factor. I'm I, asking I, 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 how I, I, much I, money I, does okay. that cost? Let me finish. It's two factors. One, um, if I have a budget of XYZ, I have to get this many players in, right? The first thing I'm gonna do is go through my trusted sources to try to do it the cheapest way I can, right? If I think that, if I know that, and I and I, I if I have an inkling that LA Tech can came to see Dub, man, I ain't got a budget that can. I don't. I don't even have. But like I said, I don't even think TSU had scholarships in the 2000s. They, they might have. They probably had two or three, but they didn't they even have had enough. Scholarships. Then they had more than two or three. How many they had? More than two or three, but, but five, ten, right? I got ten scholarships to give out. That's it. So I have to be more strategic with who I talk to. I can't just go to every school and talk. Because if, what if you say, "Yeah," and it's a guy over here that that that, that I got I got to be super strategic with who I pick. So I agree with you. And I, I just feel like the money issue is a big thing. Because like I said, if I'm if I'm I'm, I'm trying to save money, and I got to still get jerseys. I still got to pay for. I got a, a budget of ten thousand for my program. They got a budget for of twenty million for their program. Well, they can well, do a lot well, more. Hold on. I ain't saying just come talk to any and everybody, which yeah. which which I ain't saying which which TSU will let you walk on. I ain't saying come and talk to any and everybody that we can get off this. What I'm saying is, if I know I got a four star recruit in my backyard, five star recruit, mm -hmm. three star recruit in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Why would I not at least go inquire? Inquiring don't cost me shit. I'm a, I'm a, we have, we have to get a, a coach on here, a, a football coach. We gotta get my TSU, man. Mr. Williams, am I tripping, bro? No, I'm saying, nah, I just want to know. Guys, you guys are both making good, valid points, but I do think if you had a coach on here to kind of give his insight, that would be even better. Yeah, but yeah. Both y'all making good, valid points. I, I want to know, because I mean, like I said, that's what I'm trying to say, because I don't, I, I, I'm not saying you're wrong, or I'm just saying that. I just know the guys that I dealt with, that because I had some guys that came from some from from big, from bigger schools, and even the school we was at, we had the largest endowment in the country. So like there were certain conversations, certain things that were said to us when we came to recruit, when we came, when we got there. It might it might have been the coach to say, yeah, but you know, but it's like the player that you stayed right with, like, hey, this is how so and so get down, blah 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 blah, woo woo, woo, woo you know what I'm saying? And the 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 sanctity or you can't just go out and man, they because 
if you if you burn one school, you're not going to get no schools. I don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like some of these guys that we see that like, well, what happened to him? Like he burnt these schools. He burnt the school. Did he talk too much post, pre, or during? And no, no. Speaking of going backwards, the infrastructure, nobody is going to let one player burn 50, 60, 120 years of infrastructure. Okay, we'll, so cool. We'll, we'll hide some we'll hide some evil stuff to protect infrastructure. So because so, infrastructure is bigger than just that one person. I, one. So so cool. If you have this position, mm-hmm. and we, we've talked about this on this podcast before. If you have this position, this position yeah. about kids, you know, choosing uh 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 what what you call it? WPI, WIP, what it's called? PWCs. PWCs over HBUs. Yeah. yeah. If you have that position of wow, hey man, we need to make sure we send our kids to historically black universities, not these uh predominantly white institutions. Yeah. How can you have that position? But then I don't want to say this because I've I've been drinking. But how can you have this position? <laughs> it seem like you caping for kids, or you caping for our HBCUs, not actively going to go recruit. Or, or, or talent, or in-state, in-city talent. I mean, I think, I think you lost me a little bit in there. That's all. I'm, I'm not capable. Have. I've been drinking Duce. Well, <laughs> I mean, we've all had a little something to drink. But what I'm saying is, uh, um, what I'm saying is, like I said before, it's more of them than us. So it's more people who have been taught that to get the money first. The money is the most important thing. Money makes the world go round. That's true. Money makes do all the things that I do. Ride down bell for one D, bum screw. Like money is 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 the money is the motivation. Money, money is the issue. So if TSU as a coach, my budget is twenty thousand for the for the semester for basketball. I got twenty. I got to cover my jerseys. Cover my my staff. Let's say it's a hundred thousand. That's jersey staff trips. Everything. Boom. Right. Out of that 100,000, 20 is recruiting. Now, I know that Texas, Louisiana, Louisiana Tech, Baylor, or after AM, Louisiana Tech, these four schools have put a budget on Dub for, for, to come see Dub. If I go there with my pitch, they have a budget for you. I ain't got no budget for you. I, I got a budget, but I do have a budget where, okay, so now I'm more strategic. I got a budget for this kid that's in Mississippi, who is my homeboy nephew, and he didn't, and he didn't be sending me tape from him since day one. So I'll, I'll use my 5,000 to get him here and give him a scholarship. Cause I have, it's, it's, it's more, it's a safer bet. I don't, I can't just, maybe he'll come here because I don't have the budget for it. Because if I, maybe he come here and he don't, the time I spent with you, I could have spent with this kid who go come here, who doesn't have the option of five major colleges in, in his city, who doesn't have LA Tech and so-and-so. And he's not as good as Dub, but he's comparable to Dub. You see what I'm saying? Okay. But I could be wrong. Um, what y'all eat for Thanksgiving, man? Man, I have liver and onions for Thanksgiving. That's what I had. <laughs> would, would you add again? Liver and onions. Liver and oh, onions. Meat, bro. <laughs> you know why? I, I, I eat the organ meat because it's the best source of protein. So I, that's why I eat the organ meat. Growing up in my household, man, my mom was like, like she didn't fuck with organ meat, bro. And I never knew why she didn't fuck with organ meat. But because she mm-hmm. didn't fuck with it, I've never like... uh. I've never tried liver and onions or or liver, period. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm a, um at four at this at this how the young lady say it at this big age of 42. I might <laughs> I might I might go to Luby's, man, and give me some some liver and onions. You know what I'm saying? Hold up, man. Why you go to Luby's though, man? Uh, let me the... tell you, let me tell you why I go to Luby's. <laughs> I got a rule when I go to Luby's, bro. Cause I do yeah. like Luby's still a little bit. I get like the rectangle fish from Luby's, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, that's God, classic. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that shit clutch, bro. So when I go to Luby's, man, uh, if it's a, if it's a, you know, a lot of old people still go to Luby's. So, mm-hmm. you know, if I go to Luby's, if it's like a, a old, a older lady, uh, in front of me, or behind me, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll pay for the, for their lunch. You know what I'm saying? 
So I'm that's my thing this. when I go to Luby's, bro. When I go to Luby's, if it's a, 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 a senior of our community, and this mm-hmm. might sound bad because I don't do it for the white folks, but if it's like, <laughs> a, a, you know, you know, a, yeah. a elder in our community, whether it's a black lady or an older black yeah. guy, yeah, or if it's a vet, you know what I'm saying? If it's a like like a, a service veteran, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'll pay for their lunch. And uh, that's he probably he probably, he probably didn't kill thirty five kids, man. You're like he a vet, man. Man, it's okay, bro. My brother. <laughs> he was in Vietnam. He was in Vietnam, knocking off little kids. Bow, bow, bow. I'm joking. I'm sorry. He did Go it on. for our freedoms, bro. You know, he he, he did. Said, it. I killed all of the kids for your freedom. If he I ain't kill them little baby gooks, if he ain't do it, bro. And I don't know if you can say that word, bro. But if I, he will, did it, I, I was being him. I don't. I'm sorry. I <laughs> if, he, if he did it, he did it for me to be able to walk around here with this nine I got in my pocket while I'm in Louis. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'll pay for their food, bro. So that's why I still go to Luby's. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm gonna try to the the organ meat. That's live though. I appreciate yeah, you. you gonna? I mean, I think it's just, it's a lot of taboo around it. But when you when you, I I just got used to it and I started loving it. But it, you know, but the thing is, I don't eat any other meat. I'm a, I just don't eat. You know, I stopped eating red meat, pork and beef and chicken. I stopped eating all that stuff in 2017, 2018. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's one thing on the show we don't allow, bro. And that's a disrespect in the yard bird, man. You can't yeah, we disrespect we, we with chicken around <laughs> here, bro. You can't be disrespecting the, the yard yeah. bird, man. I, I probably eat chicken. <laughs> if it's seven days in a week, I'm pretty sure I eat chicken five of them. Yeah, I have to say, man, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I stop eating, I, I ain't stop. Beef, I'm sketches on beef, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I've had liver before. Liver tastes like like uh day old steak, but I can see how people could like it. You know what I'm saying? If you if you do it right, it's like you can a do it right. old steak. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But the chicken, man, the chicken has got me th- so th- through so many situations. Like so many times in life when I didn't know what was going right with me, I knew I could go to churches and get <laughs> me and give me a chicken wing. And it was made like it's like God made the chicken wing to fit in your hand perfect. Like this is like if he didn't want me to eat it, why made it like that? Why he why he ain't make it like a breast where you gotta try to you like you don't know where to bite a breast, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, a wing, you gotta you gotta do surgery on a wing first, but the but the but the leg, a chicken leg. Yeah, my my it's new like your shit, hand. My 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 new shit is Popeye's ghost pepper wings, man. Them, them shits be good, bro. Those ghost are they're, they're but it's not really peppery though. They're good, but I thought it'd be a little more hint. Yeah. Depends I on went to Louisiana. Though. Louisiana got them real Popeyes in Louisiana. They were really spicy. Bro, yeah, let yeah. me tell you about, about my Popeyes Louisiana uh, <laughs> situation. It, it kind of fucked me up. Uh, I was in New Orleans drunk one night in the Garden District. You know, me and the female, we was walking through the Garden District at like 2 in the morning. And, you know, I was hungry. And Popeyes was open. And I was like, man, get in here and give me like a little two-piece and a biscuit. Yeah. And, uh, Bro, that shit was amazing. I don't know what they do in Louisiana at they Popeyes. It's different, yeah. I think they use a different recipe because I've like, had that New Orleans Popeyes one time. And even, even Isn't that the, crazy? It wasn't no, it went on plexiglass stuff. I don't know if niggas just choose not to rob Popeyes in New Orleans. But yeah. hell no, nah, they going back. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I tomorrow, there, baby. What no, what no plexiglass? I mean, the young lady, and and this is why I really love New Orleans. The young lady behind the counter, you know what I'm saying? She might have been, you know, a chicken sandwich or two obese, but mm-hmm. she was just light skin, pretty, and Creole, mm-hmm. and she was talking to me nice, and I almost got smacked by my wife, and uh, <laughs> you know, it it was it was live, and that shit just was. I mean, the grease was different, the seasoning was different, you know what I'm saying? It, it was. I got, two, I got, I got two things to age both of y'all. Right quick. Yeah, you were old nigga. I remember when Popeyes first came with the spicy chicken and not the sandwich. I'm talking about just spicy. Like that it was this original hey. flavor. They came with spicy, like, oh man, they got spicy chicken at Popeyes. Lost their mind. I lost my mind at least. You old and then, I, don't, I don't remember a time without spicy chicken. They used to have the regular chicken at Popeyes. And this is another one. I remember when Dolly Parton, when I was like, yeah, I'd knock her off, man. I remember like it was a time in life where I, I'd have knocked her down. But now, when I seen that in the back of Daisy Dukes, man, I was like, man, I was like, they tripping, man. They tripping. Dolly Parton tripping, man. I hear some dudes walking around here still would knock down Dolly Parton. I, so I said this, maybe I ain't seen this this person 
on screen in the last five to eight years. Yeah. Last time I truly remember seeing Pam grow on screen. Yeah. She was in the movie with Queen Latifah and, and uh Mo, and not most stuff. It was Queen Latifah and Common when he was the basketball it's probably, player. It's probably a bad movie. If, it's, if Queen Latifah was in it, it's probably a bad movie. Uh, it was it was it was uh Queen Latifah uh, and Common. Just just just, just right. because no, just right like, yeah. just right. What's about when he was playing basketball? He was playing ball, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I seen Pam Gray, right. bro, and Pam Gray yeah, had man. like her. That was a bad movie. movie. Yeah, it was. A good movie, bro. <laughs> that was a bad movie. Bro. No, it was a good movie, bro. You just a fucking hater, bro. Hey man, I, at Come that on, time, Gary, put your mind into it, man. At that time, when I saw Pam Greer on screen, I still said I hit Pam Greer just because of what she used to be. Like, like I don't mm-hmm. know what she looks like today, but I, ain't, I I might still hit Pam Greer so I can like tell, you know, like my niece and nephews if they ask, like, yeah, your uncle hit Pam Greer. I feel like that's the that, 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 that was fourteen years ago, bro. That's what I'm saying. I feel like it's. I feel like it's still a flick. Like I feel like if I can sit down in the living room, sip some coffee with my old man and my uncle, and be like, "Hey, you know what, old niggas, I hit Pam Grill. I feel like they're gonna, they gonna be jealous. Yeah, they're gonna be jealous as fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. She, but she, as as she would, you wouldn't say I hit her when she was seventy. You hit, you just I hit her. It is, I'm just gonna say I, because to them that was they Halle, bro. That was they sex him, but that was they 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 Melissa. That was that prom, not her prom. Yeah. That's like that's like saying I hit I hit Pinky and he like in 2024. Like oh, batter, man. bro. It does like, not. I hit matter. Pinky in '92. You're like oh, don't matter, bro. <laughs> don't matter, bro. Like but in two twenty and not in 2002. You're like oh. No, nah, not 2002. Maybe 20, 20, maybe 2015. You'd be like, yeah, 2015. Eh. You're like, 2022. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't lie, uh, bro. You know, I, I don't like the skinny girls, bro. And, you know, Peaky has, has gained some pounds. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I still, I still smash Peaky, bro. Like today. <laughs> I still smash Peaky, bro. I mean, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I guess, but leads, leads, leads me to my next, my, my next and final question. For a hundred million dollars, would you sit down with your family and watch a lot? Uh, I mean, a recreated film about your life. How much? Damn, for a hundred million. A hundred million. Why not? Hell yeah, we finna get some popcorn, some some, some libations. <laughs> shit, we all gonna sit down on the sofa and watch that shit. I everything, a million. everything, bro. Hey, everything. There's no. I'm gonna have me a drink. I'm gonna be sipping on something. Jeez. But shit, I do it. I'm gonna be like, hey, man, your son was a wild boy. Yeah, I'm gonna, have, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to pass on that one, bro. I'm why, like, but why would you man. have to pass? So let me ask you a question. Without you, if you don't want to disclose any of it, you don't have. Go ahead, to. say what you got to do. But is there anything that has happened in your life up until this point that you would be ashamed of if your family saw it? Like there's several shits I've done. You know give what I'm me, saying? If you can give an example, give me an example of something that's not telling too much of your personal business. Oh, well, I'll, I'll say I had, I had to shit in the woods one time, man. Oh, man. Uh, you bro. was there. Oh, sweet. I was, bro, I'm, that ain't nothing that. But, yeah, you were, you was there. No, I know I was dumb. I'm saying I was there, bro. That's like a funny moment. <laughs> like, why would I? I don't give a okay. fuck about that. Okay. Okay, then. Okay, let me see. Okay, I would say to some of the things that I would just like, man, why you gotta show that, man? Like, the times I lost a fight. The I don't times, give a fuck about that. The times when I got rejected in a cold way. I don't give a fuck about that either. And then, man, no, no. Cause it's it's a moments. Your mama sitting right here, man. It's a moments <laughs> in my I life. Don't uh, she go see? Million, yeah, like, bro. nah. A wow. hundred million dollars, bro. Like the most out of all the things that I've that I may have been involved in in my life, the things that my closest partners, which is you and, and King and Drew, don't know about. I'm really not that embarrassed about sharing the shit, bro. Like the most. 
I'm talking about your saying? mama sitting, my mama sitting right here, bro. You know, there's some bro. things I ain't done, man. And she, she go, man, why I'm going to right? 95% of the shit that will pop up on screen, my mama already had a feeling that I did it or wouldn't be shocked if she saw I did it. So I ain't tripping on that. But she going to see you do it, bro. She going to see you. I don't care, bro. I'm going to be like, hey, you know, you know that Louis Vuitton uh, trunk that you've always been on? Yeah, we finna go cop that when we get to watching this. Uh, after that, you gonna buy your mama a house, a car. She gonna feel better after this. Yeah, you I know. ain't gotta buy a house. You know, she 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 cool with a house. I ain't gotta buy a car. I'm just, hey man, we finna. Hey, after we get to watching this, we gonna go to Ruth Crystal or whatever the popping restaurant is. I don't go out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe, my mama, maybe. my mama don't care. My <laughs> old man, my mama don't care. My old man, you no know, half the shit. The only thing that is questionable is probably gonna be my if they show my internet browser history, because, you know. Oh, man, I, I forgot watch, about that. I, I do watch porn. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes, like, I don't... They're they going to watch. They're going to see what type of porn you're watching, though. And, see, and, and that's the thing, because yeah. I don't... I don't, watch, <laughs> I don't necessarily watch porn for self-pleasure. I just like watching porn. Oh. So, I will take a deep dive in porn from time to time. So I might be like, oh, you finna see see what I searched on on that day. But outside of that, hey, fuck it, man. You know, I don't kink shame, bro. So, you know, hey, this this what I like. No, man. I I you know, I might have done some things, man. I the no, I don't I don't need my mama see none of that. Man, man. Nah, she man. can't see that. My tea lady can see all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Really, she really can see all of it. I don't really. Care. Then now, now I'm thinking I mean, about it. I'm if, like, if you know I can't love, talk it's about unconditional, it. you good. It's unconditional. Nah. So have unconditional. Oh, she love. gonna love me still, but she gonna be like, man, why would you do them girls like that? Look at your ass sideways. Yeah. She gonna look at me super sour. She's like, why would you? <laughs> why would... I remember one time. This, I'm tell you how I I was wild on a different level as a young young kid. I remember one time I used to live on Kirkendall, 1960. And I stayed in Champion in Champion Fort or Champion Forest. So the bus let, let off on Kirkland 1960. You make a left and walk down the streets to the apartments, whatever. Man, I'm walking. I had to be like in the second grade. I'm walking. It's three, three, three twenty-five. Well, I pee, man, as I'm walking. I just unzip my thing and I'm just walking down the street. <laughs> it's <a> rainbow. <laughs> I'm talking about this rainbow, like to the point. Well, I just stopped and I had to turn on the wall and start drawing on the wall. You know what I'm saying? On 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 the apartment. Mm. This, this, I, this, I'm on a, it's on a, the side main street. It's a Blair right there right now on that side street on what's you call it. Oh, you talking no, about the bridges? Yeah. The bridges? I yeah, used to stay you, in the bridges. Yeah. It used to be something else back in the day, but you know what I'm saying? But you okay. need to walk down that street to get there. Yeah. Man, so so my my old man, I don't know how I, I'm 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 in Weeby land. You know what I'm saying? That's a double entendre. We, 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 we. You know I mean, I, I heard it. I ain't, I ain't want to acknowledge it, though. You know what I'm saying? And so he, I get to the house, and he, and so I don't know if he wait. I don't know if he laughed like the hour or something. <laughs> like, or maybe he was leaving. I didn't say, I don't know. But so, like, maybe like two hours later, he come back. Like, hey, man, you going to pee, man. Just go behind something. Why, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Why you just sitting there? I was like, I don't know, man. I just had to pee. He's like, man, you gotta, you can't do it like that, man. He thought we chopped it up about it for like 20 minutes. But I think he was laughing. I know he was laughing, man. Like, I got caught having sex one time. I was like, maybe it was that same year. And so he's like, you know, so my mom told my dad to talk to me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I don't wanna talk about it. Like, man, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It was hot. This fool said, I bet it was hot. <laughs> See, <laughs> how, how me and, how me and my, my, my parents, you know, I'm like an open book. Like, we got a great relationship. So, you know, it's nothing that my mama can see on screen that she would be shocked at. Like, she might see some shit and be like, nigga, you did that? And I'd be like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> she, and she'd just be like, Okay, that sounds like some shit you do. You know what I'm saying? It won't be no shit, but she's like overly like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Same thing with my mom. And, and 
like I said, like ninety five percent of the shit I did in my life, my old man know about. Like, I came home so drunk one night, I parked my car across the front lawn at the front door. Damn, now you've been in my house before, bro. You see yeah, some yeah, shrubs yeah, yeah. and shit. So for me to <laughs> have the fucking LTD on the sidewalk in front of the house and pass out and go to sleep, and this nigga wake up at four thirty in the morning and go to work. And come outside and shake his head and be like, man, if you don't move this bullshit ass car the way for your mama wake up, you know what I'm saying? Like it ain't you know. see, I ain't yeah, saying, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm mama's I'm mama's angel, bro. I don't I'm mama's angel, man. Man, my T lady from fourth war, bro. As bougie hey. as she act, my T lady from fourth war, my old man from the country, but he was a menace too. So you know, man. it's in my character. I, there ain't nothing that I can do that they're gonna be surprised about. The more, the more I think about it, the more I'll be like, nah, this ain't no way, man. Cause I have to, man, but cause then your mom's not Catholic, bro. Then mama, your mom's not Catholic. So it's mm-hmm. already a level of, of, of shame in life that Catholics have. It's just like, you, you should be shameful in life. Cause you know, Jesus, Jesus died for you and you're not worthy. And you ain't setting up hell marriage this month, all that off the rip. And then, like, she sees something like you did what? Yeah, we're not a part of that bullshit ass religion. Uh, Did what? Oh, man. Oh, what? How could you? What? Oh, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, you know, I've met your tea lady and she's a very nice lady, bro. That's what I was saying. I don't think that if she could see your life on screen, she would be that shocked of the shit that you've done. Cause she knows her kid, bro. Your mama know your, she knows her kid, bro. She knows the blind ate. Totally. See what I'm saying? Why are you out from my government on? You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, I got warrants, bro. What did I start say? <laughs> James Boogie. It didn't say James Boogie, bro. <laughs> you, 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 full government. Nah, she. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess I got, I got a wild family. I guess whatever. But man, I don't know, bro. Look nah. at how your sister doing, man. She's doing great, man. I just oh, got yeah. my mama today. She mama just came back from LA. They went to uh, uh she went to LA to my sister. So. Oh yeah, when, when your sister coming back to H time, man? Uh, Christmas, I think. You gonna invite me over? For, you gonna invite me over? What? what why didn't you tell me, bro? I would have came through and had you know lunch with y'all and your sister. Oh, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> We don't, we don't talk about you. That's why we don't be like, uh, why y'all want to break the up, man? Uh, I, I, I mean, just like look, when man, I'm next, naked in bed, time, next, next, my sister, look, it's like when I'm naked in my bed, I don't think about dub. When I'm with my sister, I don't be thinking like, what is dub doing? Man, <laughs> look, next time she come in time, let me know. I'm going to take her out to get lobster and coffee or some shit. You know, talking about. Yeah, that's a hell of a combination. Lobster and coffee. Yeah, <laughs> what say, man? You, are you trying to kill her or something, bro? What you? What are you trying to say? I ain't trying to say. Trying to, trying to say. You trying to? You trying to? You trying to murder her, bro? That's that's a murderer's. I had lobster and coffee, and then I drove to Who Oklahoma sell lobster in my and truck. Coffee in the same place. That's what I'm thinking. I know. Yeah. Could I have some lobster bisque with a frappuccino, please? Thank you. <laughs> This is going to be a whole day, bro. We're going to go to Starbucks, you know what I'm saying, and shoot the shit, and then we're going to, later on, we're going to go, you know, steak 48 or something. That sounds like me the first time I went to a special, a, a special restaurant. Could I get some uh, etouffee lobster brisk with uh, esperanzo and expensive stuff? Are you bullshitting? I have never been to a restaurant that I couldn't uh, uh, order coffee at, so, yeah. Once again, it's like being sick, bro. I don't eat, I don't drink coffee, man. I never drink coffee. I drink if if you took all the coffee I drank in my entire life, it would fit in it wouldn't fit in one cup and cut in a mug. It wouldn't really have to come. I don't I don't drink I don't like warm drinks. I think that's weird. It's like a dope, it's like a uh oxymoron. It's like jumbo shrimp. Like, why is it a warm drink? A drink is supposed to be soothing and cooling and then it's warm. Now it's hot. Now my throat is wet, but it's hot. It's hot water in my throat. Pause. I don't, I don't know. It's confusing. I don't like soup either. I never thought about that. That's an oxymoron, jumbo shrimp. And I love jumbo shrimp. That's yeah. an oxymoron. I ain't had no shrimp in a long time either, man. I want some shrimp. 
But yeah, jumbo shrimp, man. How's this shrimp in his jumbo? Well, some shrimp be bigger than other ones, though, bro. I don't know if they like captured baby shrimp in like a full adult shrimp. I don't fucking know, bro. But you know, what's the shrimp? Because you got popcorn yeah. shrimp. You got regular size shrimp. And I also popcorn think, shrimp, shrimp though. Yeah, it is shrimp, my nigga. But it's different. It's it's different species. Species. No, I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm asking. I'm asking. Is there a, 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 a species of shrimp called popcorn shrimp? No, I don't. I just think it's how you prepare it, though, bro. I'm assuming that they might take a larger no, shrimp. No, no, I'm just joking. I don't know. <laughs> but that'd be funny if it was a popcorn shrimp. Like, yeah, that's that's the ifilatus shrimpest, and that's the popcornist shrimpish. But I do know, just like you know, you got different breeds of fish. I do believe yeah. that there are different breeds of shrimp as well. But you know, I ain't a fucking expert. I think, think, that, think crawfish and shrimp. Crawfish is a shrimp, ain't it? I it's think crawfish really is a roach in the water, but you know, I still might partake. Crawfish is overrated. And I've never really had a bunch of crawfish. It is. The whole uh, process kind of, of going to a crawfish boil is bullshit. Mm -hmm. I, the, per, the, the first per, Kevin's wife served me my first dish of crawfish at 28 years old. No, I was 29. The first time I ever ate car crawfish. And I was like, this what y'all be all going crazy about? And it, I, it was, it wasn't, because I wasn't sucking no heads. Was it was like, you got to say pause after that, bro. Pause. <laughs> but uh, so it was, it was chopped up in a, it was like crawfish. Like, man, it's like, this is like fish chicken. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good meal, bro. I mean, but it's like, this is fish chicken, man. I was like, I thought it was gonna like, oh man, I thought it was gonna be like magical in my mouth. Pause. Yeah. I thought it was gonna well, be like, like when you have like, you know, some foods you eat, like man, that was man. I wouldn't mind having my, my mouth again. Is what I would think about certain foods. I got man, mosquito in here. To go back to the question you asked, the mm -hmm. only thing that I might, you know, be kind of like uh, apprehensive about on this movie yeah. of my life might yeah. be if they show uh sex scenes with some of the young ladies that I've that's what I'm that's all, all I'm thinking about is the sex thing. That's that's all I'm thinking that's about. That's what I'm 100%. thinking about too. <laughs> that's what I'm that's thinking all, about. I'm like I'm like my mom would be like you did but that. We all adults you. though bro. I feel like there's nothing that I've done that they probably didn't do though. It's like nothing's new yeah. under the sun. Mm -hmm. like, I don't like, want to see like, my like, like head ain't just getting getting like sloppy top ain't just pop up in the two thousands, bro. They was, it was it was it was you know like you know it was, it was some of our ancestors doing you know sloppy top and you know bro, just just on, just on the plantation, the, just the dialogue of the movie would probably just have I, that's what I'm, if you didn't play none of the of the scenes and just play the the audio, I'd be like, nope, no. Nah. Because <laughs> no, there's some of the things put your head the, down in shame. That's what I'm saying. Some of the things I might have said at certain points, she'd be like, what? Why did you call her? My mom with this. Why did you call her that? You how know. Much, how, <laughs> how much bread involved? A hundred million. No, nah, they can play it, bro. You're gonna live a happy I, life after this. With the money was right. Begging, I could live. Right. I could. I, I live a happier life. You know what? I live a happier life knowing my mother never had to go through that type of uh, mental anguish, even just for a minute. Like just, nah, bro. Uh, for, a, for, a the hundred, for the hundred mil, they can play the video of the, of the young lady sitting on my face, bro. One thousand percent. That's my that's minor, bro. That's minor. I mean, what you doing, bro? Freak boy, what you doing? Man, stuff I want to see. That's what I'm doing. I mean, what you doing? <laughs> you didn't already <laughs> gave your, your meat measurements out to, to broads on the podcast. So, you know. That's that's <laughs> that's nothing, bro. Man, it's man. This it, okay, is in your brain, think of the most unbelievably non- Family oriented thing you've done with a woman, and then turn mm -hmm. around and see your mama looking at it. Like being mid, I feel like in mid mode, what you're doing, and turn look at your mom right there watching. It. 
But how would you feel if, if like, you know, damn, it's going to sound fucked up when I say it. But what if your mama did the same thing, though, bro? But I ain't see it. But y'all ain't she getting ain't, any M's for she, it either. She ain't put me in the room and said, like, hey, watch this right quick. Uh-huh. Like, oh, oh, That's just watch one this. small watch, portion of it. Watch this. Watch this. Every single woman that doesn't have an OnlyFans and has something against OnlyFans or doesn't get it like, I don't want my son, my kids to look on the internet and see me, blah, 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 years mm-hmm. later. Because they know, even though that on the internet might have had him having a Gucci belt his whole life and driving a Ferrari in the, in the ninth grade, to have to see that with his eyes is the trauma that you don't want him to go through. Because it's traumatizing to see the person you love in this compromised sexual position. Or in this, and I don't want to put that idealism on anybody that I love. Or have to have them have to be like, oh, my mom who looks at me. Did she even get that life. picture out of her head? <laughs> exactly. Ever. It's going to be like, this nigga did what? With how many? At what? Oh, what is it? Is he got a, is he got a camera out? Hey, yo, when I give her the hug. Is this nigga though, filming this shit? Well, <laughs> I mean, she might feel a way about you having a tripod set up in the, in the, in the closet, but you know. She go feel, she. I, well, first off, four would be the closet. It'd be in the middle of the room. That's bigger, like, nah. Then you you implicating other people, like, so they, so they came over my house and was all nice and friendly. Their and face is going to be blurred out, though. It's just you. It's, it's a movie in my life. What you mean, faces? Her, it, face, it, her face is going to be blurred out, bro. You only gave consent for your face. Listen, but they, but my mother knows these people. So? She, uh, she going to be like, oh, yeah, that's... If it was if he was this years old and I took him to the lady house, you got like, kids. Lady fuck my son. You, your, you got kids. You don't think your mama know you fucking? Come on now, bro. I'm not saying it's not about the fucking. It's about the way and the and just the entire man. There I don't is know. That whole new. visual image you're having right exactly. here for the rest of the life. Hey, yeah. Bro, there is nothing new under the sun, bro. Like how nah. many times you watch your parents fuck? Well, I've never watched my parents fuck. Do you want to watch your parents fuck? What's the price tag to put on you for you watch your parents fuck? I mean, if there's a movie about my parents and it's 100 M's and, and the family, you only said the family. So I'm assuming it's the immediate family. If we got to sit down and watch it for 100 M's, I you guess you sit down and watch it. So for 100 M's, you'll sit there and watch your mama and your old man and I could do the do, do, do. I got here. So apparently they had to fuck at some point. So... Oh man! Hell, nah. M's? Yeah, it's cool, bro. Hell, Give me my nah. cut, and I go buy my Corvette, and then I cry in my Corvette while I go to get me some steak <laughs> and some shit, bro. Oh man, I'd rather just not even have to see that. And- Look, money doesn't solve your problems, but it does uh, help you cope with bullshit comfortably. You know what I'm saying? So, it's facts. Hey man. Uh, there's nothing in my life that I've done that I'm that ashamed of that my parents see it on a, on a on a screen. Oh, man. I I'm gonna be like, well, eh, I was a wild boy. No. Hey, you ever fuck, hey, have you ever fucked with your mom in the house? Yup. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I think so. You know what I'm talking about? What's what's the problem? And since my parents are still together, I, they fuck while I've been in the house. Yeah, yeah, but it's so different, I mean, bro. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. No. But when they was doing, I wasn't doing this. Yeah, because it wasn't 100 M's on the tape. For 100 M's, for, so you think for 100 M's, your parents would have set you in the chair and let you watch them do it? Nobody said that. You're moving the goalposts. No, I'm just saying. It's, it's the same thing. It's just later on. It's the difference between 100 M's on the table and I'm sitting in the room with my parents. Fuck. Opposed to 100 M's on the table and you see my life. The fucking part is going to be just a portion of my life, bro. It's going to be some good shit in there, too, that they're going to be proud of. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, so you're you know, saying the good out of the Yeah, bro. It ain't like it's just uh, all bad. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be some shit they're proud of. You know what I'm saying? The so grand say, scheme of things say. in my life. When you look at the arc of my life in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's going to be a lot of positive and only a little bit of negative. So, you know, we all adults here, man. I'm married. I've courted. 
We fucked. All right, cool. The big, the 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 big two hundred pound, six foot two hundred pound bitch rolled roll my face and gave me head at the same time, and we did some shit in between all of that. So you know, Damn. I ain't I ain't I ain't let a young lady peg me and no shit like that, and I ain't fucked with no niggas and no transgender. So I'm one thousand percent cool with all of that being on display. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I was like, take some pointers, man. Y'all might want to try this later on. You, know? <laughs> you say, you say, you say, yo, yo, your highs out. They, your highs go so high that when you come down, you can't go too low because you just went so high. Oh, I didn't say good. that. It's a lot of peaks and valleys within my life. All hey, I'm saying it, is, no, you say you're good out when you're bad. I'm, I'm just saying, saying I, that if if you could, the the roller coaster of my life is a bunch of peaks and valleys. So yeah. you're gonna take the good with the bad, and I don't think it's a lot of bad. I don't you're think good I'm good out where you're bad, right? I don't think I'm a sexual deviant. Hey, man, I man, not say all that. I, you keep putting words in my mouth. I just said about your sexual deviancy. I just said well, you you the one that's afraid for your mama to know about your sexual activity. So I'm assuming I, you got a little bit of sexual deviancy going on in there, bro. I I literally told you I don't want to put that imagery of her baby boy being nasty in her mind. That's what your I mama, said. Your nah. mama know you nasty, bro. You got kids. No, she you don't. Know. How she know I'm nasty? She might you think got I kids. Doing, but... She got grandkids. She spent time with. She know you didn't have to fuck somebody, bro. But she um, she but so you think in her brain when she see her drag here, she see me stroking? She know you had to stroke to get him here. I didn't say that. I said, do you think she sees me? No, she don't see that. She's like, oh, they have a baby. And she sees the baby. She don't, also real she shit. Don't, see, a hundred she don't see a nasty face. She don't see this right a here, bro. A hundred M's <laughs> is life-changing money. A hundred M's can make my immediate family comfortable, bro. And if all I have to sacrifice is my family seeing the story of my life on screen for a hundred M's, let's do it. That's what I'm saying. Cause you want with that hundred million, you gonna take care of the next three generations of your family. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You see, but see, watch this. Watch this. Little bears meant to take care of the next three generations. Watch this. With the knowledge and wisdom I would give my family, it's gonna be worth more than a hundred M's. No, it's and not. And they're gonna generate more. Damn, that's <laughs> fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, you ain't no, got, you ain't got no. You ain't got a hundred million worth of memories, nigga. What the no, fuck you not. get? No. Nah. You, you gonna tell me I ain't got a hundred million? You know what? I can't wait till my seeds are a hundred millionaires, so I can call you, and be like, "Hey, man, yeah, man, two hundred and three hundred, man." On my wisdom, I'm I planted them seeds. Now, what if your seeds got a hundred M's off OnlyFans? You still gonna brag about it? I plan the wisdom for for them to get on OnlyFans. I see. Cool. So if you cool, if you cool with your seeds profiting off of OnlyFans, I'm not. But you should know. be cool with your family profiting off of seeing your life on screen. No, no, no. I, I was joking. I, I wouldn't be proud of my my seeds getting a hundred million off off of OnlyFans. Depends on what they. Do. I wouldn't be proud. Depends on what they do. But if yeah, depends what they do. Yeah. I mean, I ain't got no kids, but if I had a they daughter, doing something right, that's what that means. Yeah. yeah. If I had a doing daughter, something she, right, they making that much off OnlyFans. If I had a daughter I mean, and if she they, was making a hundred M's off of hitting herself, we were toys. All right, cool. Yeah, do that. Shit. If they want some, if it was my son, son, I wouldn't shoot. Yeah. Damn, boy. Yeah, see, sure you took both of y'all on that. On y'all are both on on the uh, on the male centric. You know, I gotta get on my. I gotta get on my feminist on my side right now. So y'all yeah. saying the, the 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 men can do it, but the now. Nah. If I led with Bella, the young lady being able to, I got kids though. So, you know. I'm, no, I'm my, saying if either way, I'm not tripping. I'm saying if it was on, on some Bella Thorne, where she just because she was a high, she was a Disney Disney actress. So all she gotta do is just show her nipples and that people want to and she's making a million a day. I ain't tripping. Just like mm -hmm. if it's if it's a high Disney actor and all I gotta do is show up, I gotta just be less covered. If people want to pay me. I ain't tripping. But if you, if you, if you fucking for money, man, just, I mean, let me know if you got an issue, if you got a problem, you just like fuck it like that, and you rather if you gonna fuck regardless, somebody's gonna get paid. Like, just let me know. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. That's how. Let me know. That's more of a thing too with with the hundred million. Like some of the things my 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 family would see. They would be seeing it, so maybe they wouldn't see the whole the whole play, but they still would. They probably wouldn't see the whole. They probably see just the actions. And they're like, man, 
I got I, I wouldn't have a chance to let them know. Like this is where I, I maybe I can see it. Oh, that's how he was feeling, you know. So he did that. He acted this way. He wouldn't just be in that way. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. I want to know. In that instance. Man, we've been off for a long. I don't know how long. How long have we been off, man? man we've been off for a minute. It's midnight. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man. Your boy yeah, got to go to work in the morning and do absolutely <laughs> me. Oh, I gotta go it's train in the morning. I'm, tra- I'm training in the morning, man. Well, this has been another riveting episode of the 16 Shots Podcast with Young James Boogie. You are crazy. And hey, y'all, dog. Hold up. We got to get your socials, Mr. Williams, man. Let the people know your socials so they can get with you and uh, get with your program and yeah, anyway, uh, they can contact so you. They, they can reach me out. At, um, you can reach me on Instagram at Houston underscore buzz, or you can reach me on Facebook, Brian Paul. You can catch me on there. Um, I got a website coming out too, cometicenterprises.com. So that'll be coming out pretty soon. And you can reach me on that in, in the opt in page. That's what up. It was a pleasure uh, interviewing you and have you on a, a 16 Shots podcast, Mr. Williams. Hey, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Y'all blessed to talk to. Yes, sir. All right, man. Y'all take care. Good talk to y'all. All right. All right.